So what's everybody's favorite pasta? I like fettuccine Alfredo. Nice. I like a good standard. I like a good standard bolognese and pasta. Wait, I you like... just said pasta, not pasta. <laughs> it's spreading! You've been Americanized! Yay! Wait, I, oh, wait, I said it? I thought I... Yeah, that's twice now. Did I say... Pa wait. Oh, yeah, I wasn't going to point it out to her. You I was did? just going to let her go oh, through God, pasta. Did. Ah! Uh, did I, wait, so which one's, which one's the Canadian one? Pasta Don't worry about it. Don't worry pasta. about it. Don't think about it. Pasta. You're just doing in between now. I don't know. I get confused. It's like it's I like am it's like it's like when I say against. Everyone gets upset that I say against like against and it's supposed to be against and I'm like and I mix them up all the time and I'm like fuck You go against the past dude. Also, I'm sorry, Austin. We started this recording and I'm already yelling and I'm seeing red on my <laughs> my my thing. So such is the nature of pasta. <laughs> hey Monty. Hi. When you're not eating pasta, where can they find you? Eating more pasta. I like food. That's the <laughs> joke. Uh, you can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter, where I'm posting pictures of fat frogs. Um, yeah. Specifically one fat frog, which is Gerps. He's been eating like a champion, and I'm kind of scared that he's becoming too powerful. So um, he ate two giant crickets uh, the other day, uh, which was very impressive. Um, so I didn't feed him yesterday because I was a scared. I was I'm just fearful of his power. Um, but if you want to see frog updates, uh, I take videos of feeding him and like holding him. Except for when I tried to hold him to like show him off, he peed in my hand, um, mm -hmm. wh which I respect, but also was upset about. Um, you can also find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Blue. Uh, there might be some intermittent streams. Um, I actually would love to stream tomorrow if I can um, because I want to do art because I want to save up manny um and i want to draw more i've been i've been very much itching to do a lot of artistic stuff so definitely check that out if not maybe pokemon i don't know uh um, have so i yeah. seen your art mochi i don't know i could post it i'll post some while <laughs> while while the next person introduces themselves cool sarah where can they find you mm -hmm. um it's uh twitter sarah with an h and with an e willia uh, uh, Good luck cool. typing that. Nice. Arkov. <laughs> Be miserable right for 47 here. seconds and chill yourself. You assume it'll take that long. <clears throat> I'll make sure it takes that long. I didn't realize Netflix you were quicker than a New York Minute. I know that phrase. Where did that phrase come from? New York, obviously. Same place oh, they made mayonnaise. Wait, right. I remember what you said now. Nah, passing on. Yeah. You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Arkov. Throughout the week, it's going to be mostly Final Fantasy and whatnot. On Monday, I'll probably be starting the Mass Effect stream earlier to make up for being unable to do it last week. Tuesday, it's Final Fantasy all day. You aren't stopping me. A new patch is coming out. Do you it. You cannot stop me. Do it, dude. Do it up. Yeah. F, F, F the man. He can't stop you. Then Saturday, of course, is Prince Division here, and Sunday, including tomorrow, is going to be Murder Cave. Don't know what we're doing, but we'll figure it out. Hey, Connor. Yeah, it's me. Tell us about Dead House Sonata. Well, Dead House Sonata is a six-player action RPG where you can play as the dead to fight the living. It's a narratively driven game that's being developed by the one, the only, Dennis Dyack, uh, the man behind the legacy of Kane and... Uh, uh, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. Definitely be sure to check it out. It's going to be free to play next year, but if you want early access, you can definitely go ahead and follow this link that I absolutely had prepared. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Distortion Devil. I'm streaming Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Tuesday, it's sort of up in the air right now. I'm going to take a, a brief hiatus from Authorize the Fucking Thing. I'm going to take a brief hiatus oh. from uh, R.I.W. just because I'm not really happy with how the streams are going. Um, you know, and might might be doing just some random streams Tuesdays. Fridays will also be Friday Funhouse where I play a lot of fun games with my friends. We played Fall Guys and it was really fucking fun. <laughs> uh, Saturday, playing Yakuza Zero yeah. and then doing this and Sundays. Uh, we're playing games with the Harbingers, the people behind Deadhouse Sonata. We played some 
epic spell wars last time, and it was a whole lot of fun. And that's me. Nice. All right, bits. Do some bits. <clears throat> Did Sarah get Woo! Huh? What about you? There's a bunch of stuff with you. There's a lot of stuff with you, actually, today. No, I'm good. I didn't, I don't do well, anything. I don't I'm going to say it, because I'm excited for one of the things, even though right. it involves you. Um, well, obviously, Transformers. If you guys haven't checked out Transformers yet, Bosco's in Transformers. He's a really stupid character, and then a really good character, in my opinion. That's an opinion I'm having. Yeah, but don't shit um, on Soundwave like that. No, shut up. Decepticons for mm -hmm. life. Um, And then one of the things that I'm super excited for, which I haven't been able to see yet, but I know you're in it, uh, Pokemon Twilight Wings just had its final episode release. Sure did. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, Bosco, you're Corviknight, which is hilariously ironic. And yep, also I'm Remy the, Pokemon. You're Remy Pokemon, and you're also um, the guy who, like the taxi guy, the, yep. the air taxi guy. That's too. not all I am. I'm also a bunch of the Pokemon. Yeah, aren't too, right? you like a, you're like a Gengar, aren't you? I'm a Gengar, I'm a Charizard, I'm a Monchop, I believe. I'm a Charmander, which is adorable. That's uh, great, I'm yeah. a oh uh Wooly. Do do Wooly. Wooloo. Do. Woo, I want to hear your Charmander. Do Charmander real quick. <clears throat> I'm not doing Charmander right now. Maybe Will maybe on the break. Will Pokemon burst through the fucking internet and arrest him for crimes? All I'm gonna say is I lent my voice to a lot of characters in Pokemon. <clears throat> so go check it out. All right, that's do the bits now. All right, keep on. Sure. <laughs> <sighs> Noise. Uh, all right, so we've got a lot of shit. Holy fucking shit balls. Uh, Nackley Pauly with a tier one resubscription. Time to watch my favorite cop show. My condolences, you don't have better entertainment <clears throat> uh, in terms of cop hey. show. Huh? What? That was not a knock on you at all. Shouldn't have plugged me. Ian, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Mm -hmm. Gray Beast, thank you for the tw uh, tier one sub. Spooky scary. Oh, there's more to that, though. Zako Duo with a tier one sub saying loud noises. Shut up, Zako. Captain Actually with a tier one sub. We got Draco Choji with a tier one sub saying time for more investigation. Knack with a tier one sub. There was a Twitch button told me to press. You were smart. You pressed the button. Daver Boy, 100 bits, pasta good. Sorry, pasta good. Arch Requiem D with five tier one subs. We got Shahalem. With a tier one sub, I want Gerbs to be even fatter. Y'all are terrible people encouraging obesity and frogs. Fuck off. Burnout Vogan with a tier one resubscription. Five months in, now I get to go back to dungeon crawling to save the mob boss's ghost. Seeing daughter from the evil wizard that has nothing to do with the actual case the party's investigating. This is why I love d and <clears throat> I'm sure you love it for other reasons too, Burnout. Crazy tale with 100 bits. We're going deeper underground or shit. What is that sound? Uh, Peter Piper, the portable pen with 500 bits. Hi, guys. Bits from the hospital wrecked my bike on the freeway on my way to work. Oh, what? Oh, God. Okay. Hope you're okay. Motorcycle accidents are really lethal. I mean, if they're if they're taking time to watch the show and texting and sending money, I'm sure they're okay. That means their head's good, which is really important. <laughs> I hope you get well soon. They were wearing a helmet. Okay, thank God. Yeah, always good. wear, wear always your wear shit. Helmet. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't wear a helmet and you ride a motorcycle, you're dumb. All right, hang on a second. <clears throat> We've got Ash Andre with 5,500 bits. I'm so hype. Also, love you, Bosco. Didn't list, Don't listen to these other folks. I don't. They're just jealous. It's lonely at the top. I get it. Oh, <clears throat> That's why they're always punching up. Uh, we got Tarek with a tier one sub. Love you. Ash Andre, thank you for the five tier one subs. We got A.N.W. Joe with a tier one sub. We got Mightiest with a tier one sub. Hey, guys, hope all is well. My group fucked up in Curse of Strahd. Did you split uh -oh. the party? Because that's how you that's die. How you, that, you can fuck up so easy in Curse of Strahd, though. Yes, you can. I was talking about this on the last Prince Division while you guys were all taking your bathroom break. But I gave you some really good advice. If a PC runs away from the group, let them die. Yeah. My friend lost his character by trying to help somebody. The idiot escaped because the smart guy went to try to help him and got caught instead. We Don't do moment, it. We had a moment where our rogue just triggered a huge boss encounter and we like literally turned to him and went, if you do this again, you're dead. And he's like, oh, like it was like legitimately serious. We're like, we're not going to help you. You're going to be by yourself. And he listened to us after that fact, more you're or less. Mostly I'm surprised he survived long enough to get there. Mostly because the paladin, who was very calm and nice, was the one who basically became team dad. And he put down the foot, and we were like, yes, dad. 
Sorry. Uh, let's see. We got Sword Fanatic with 500 bits. Thank you so much. Bernie Cinders with a tier one sub. We got Dude the Man with 100 bits saying, Enjoy Bosco's last game before we fire him and replace him with Matt Mercer. Listen here, you piece of absolute trash. That's first hurtful. of all, I mean, first I of give all, that shit and that's hurtful. <laughs> no, Sarah, I got this. Listen, Dude the Man. If you're going to come at me, first of all, drop more. If you're going to come at me, drop more bits to come at me because that was not worth 100 bits. How dare you? Second of all, if you're going to come at the champ, you best not miss. And that was terrible. We've made that joke before. I'm asking you to be creative. That's really all it is. And number Bosco. three, if you ever, if you Bosco. ever do that again, Bosco, right, I'll I'll this him. isn't wrestling. I'm going to get him again. I'm going to get him. Hellrith with a tier one sub continues to streak. Oh, snap. They got a streak going. MSU Bill with a thousand bits. Thank you so much for the thousand bits. The real gets to hero with five hundred bits. Guess this is the first graveyard shift for the Prince Division. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh <laughs> gosh, darn it! I hate puns. I hate it. Why do you do this? Oh, uh, we've got Hayden with a tier one resubscription. We've got Cesaro with a thousand bits. Yay! Finally get to catch you guys live on the first day of my short vacation. May you don't TPK. Why does everybody hope that we don't? We've never in any of Monty's campaigns TPK'd. You just wish for us to we roll like garbage. That's what we need the help with. Uh, we got probate with a tier three subscription for five months in a row. Just making sure my investment is good. Oh, God, it's Edward Bosco. There goes my investment. All right, you know what? What the hell? Who put something in the water? Monty, is this your doing? No. I mean, I thought this was my job, but they're all doing it for me. That's right, fine, Sarah? probate. It must be nice. You get to relax. Nah, I get, I get to be nice to Ed today. <laughs> no. Can't even go back. Probate, show up on Thursday or Friday so I can actually talk shit to you. Rippington with 1,500 bits, episode title, Fight the Cemetery. I don't get it. Is I'm that gonna a... Punch, I'm going to punch a gravestone. Do you I'm want break. pepperoni or sausage on your tombstone? <laughs> A dumb tish. Thing. It's a pizza no tombstone thing. is but a brand new pizza in the it is. Oh well, we don't have that here. In <laughs> I know. Right back. Goblin is screaming. Gr goblin uh, is screaming. Uh, yeah, we'll the quick gamer with a hundred bits. Sarah, you need to shill. She doesn't have anything to shill. She's under NDA. I mean, I saw Ride Your Wave yesterday, and it was pretty good. Are you in it? Oh yeah, one of the main characters. What? Plug it. Uh, ride your wave. It it came out on Blu-ray, subbed and dubbed. It's um, I always I never can say this guy's name. It's a Masami Yuusa movie. He's the guy who did Devil Devil Man Cry Baby, and um, yeah, you know he's got that distinct style. I was wanted to always wanted to get to dub dub one of his things. Yeah, that guy Masaki Yuusa. Wow, quarter Japanese, and I can't say these names for crap. <clears throat> that guy that, that was just in the chat. But it was great. Got to be in a, got to be with a lot of, uh, Michael was in it too. He was one of the main characters. <clears throat> Wait, Michael who? Michael Johnston. Oh, Johnston? nice. Yeah. Oh, no, sure. We know a couple of Michaels. I was like, which one? That is true. I didn't want to use the nickname because I don't know if that's okay. I feel like it's, I feel like it's kind of past using that nickname. I'm, yeah. That's fair. I didn't. I didn't want to use that nickname anymore. That's you know, fair. Why did you like, plug that? Huh? Why did you not plug that? I feel like I did at one point. And now it's kind of. I mean, I was allowed to talk about being in it like at least a month or so ago. I feel like I did. Well, you never mentioned it. Yeah, I would have remembered that. It? You were always searching for something to mention, but you yeah, you were like, I have to wait until they give me permission, and now you finally have permission. Run. Ride your wave. I play Yoko. I'm like the main character, one of the main Code characters. Code Loco. Where? Da, 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 da. God, I hate that show. Hey, Code Loco was okay. Music, Code Lyoko was awful. Don't fight me, Sarah. It was okay. Had a it good was not stuff. okay. Sarah, no. It's all right. I wish they'd gotten to do more with it. It was all right. It was intriguing. Did they do that in Canada? Um, France. Probably. It was a French attempt. Oh, interesting. Oh, uh, see, I, lo I like French animation. Dude, y'all, Martin Mystery, am I right? <laughs> no, that show was also awful. <laughs> no, I love Martin Mystery. What? Uh, anyway, sorry, Bosco, continue, because, you know, we got to get well, Defective guys. Sheep with the Tier 1 sub. Hey, guys, it's my first Saturday catching this since a long time game. I've been a part of, ended, and now I have a chance to watch. Uh, John at Dawn with the Tier 1 Welcome. sub. Welcome. Alex Welcome to the game. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I love to. Sheepy's great. Uh, Alexander the Great with the Tier 1 sub. You guys are heckin' amazing. Yeah, we are. 
Uh, nasty Ombre with 1,100 bits, stuck in quarantine at a group home. Hope y'all are doing well. <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing well. Nobody else? All right. <laughs> like right. slow pan looks at the floor and then Despacito starts playing low. Why? I mean, I'm still stuffing my face, so you know, if I go quiet. Kachulanish, or I think I said that terribly. Tier one sub, thank you so much. Dude, the man with another 500 bits saying, Oh, Ashley, don't bring that in here. I will, dude, we're going to fight. When Monty's not looking, we're going to fight. Plata 64 with a Twitch Prime sub for four months. Hope the sub money is going to a good cause. Uh, Gerb's food fund or Monty's pi wait you have a pickled asparagus collection I have pickles I have a lot of pickles <sighs> I'm out of pickled asparagus though I have pickled eggs, pickled carrots, pickled asparagus pickled pickles pickled peppers pickled onions did you pick them? yeah I did, I sure picked a lot of pickles uh -huh. Blackfoot Fair with the lead bits belated possessed TV joke they're here <laughs> oh no it's the undertaker <clears throat> let's see we got coop with a tier one sub three months in a row thank you so much uh we've got sword fanatic with 300 bits uh sundere Sun sundery sundery bosco got it uh, sarah the t is silent right no it's like a sound kind of is They're it kind oh of, is it it's kind of slip sundery like to sundery no, it's, it's like sundere it's 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 a weird combo, and even I don't think God, I'm saying so it that, quite right. Is that like the conjugated? Because I know two sundir is the infinitive, and then when you when you sundir somebody, you you sundery them. Mm. Close. It's just it, yeah, it's just it's just basically that you know that's our, it's an archetype in, in anime. You, you've uh, seen it the time. It's, right, it's well, Oscar. It's Oscar from Evangelion, basically. Got it. Evangelion. All right. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, Evangelion. Uh, all right. Well, oregano ganimos. Uh, so sword fanatic oh with 300 I, bits. I'm gonna give you that? that one. Ed. That was real good. <laughs> oregano. Yeah, I love oregano. It's red oregano ganimos. It's great. Zalinda. Uh, uh, sorry, Zenlita with 400 bits saying, "We learned it from you, Bosco. We learned it from you. Don't do as I do. Do as I say." Uh, Ooh. Nefast the fox. Wait, Nef Nefis the fox. There we go. Neff is the fox with a tier one sub. So I got dice box from my semi-local store, got home and noticed it's a die hard dice brand. Hell yeah. They have, you know, my dice tray that I use. It's always been a die hard dice dice tray. Has it? Yeah. You know that dice that Monty's been rolling really low with to let us actually win? Also die hard dice. Shut up. I use, uh, <laughs> I use rainbow dice. I use rainbow dice for the unexpectables, and it was rolling like insanely. And that was diehard dice as well. Buy diehard dice Ooh. for your GMs. You'll do better. I'm using my sunset dice, and then some dice I got from the Dragon's Treasure Vault dice bag that I got, where I had like a bunch of sets of dice. It literally looks like they put styrofoam and resin. It's kind of funky looking. It looks like candy, and it makes me want to eat it, but I can't because I'll die. Don't eat diehard dice products, ladies and gentlemen. They might they be delicious. They are choking hazard. They are choking hazard, but. Why would you eat them when you want to use them to roll? Die Hard Dice, the official not sponsors of the Unexpectables. Hello? I'm sad now. Uh, Monty, it is 7.10. Did we want to get started? It is 7.10, yes. So, you guys ready? Yep. Tara? Let's do this like Brutus. Okay. Dressing! Et tu, Brute? Ye. <laughs> All right, so when last we left our officers, uh, you guys had got horribly sidetracked. Uh, you guys are currently on a case to find a supposedly missing prince who has been taken by trolls. Through various different trials and tribulations, you guys managed to get tangled with the orc mafia. Um, and the current situation is you guys are currently searching for the orc mafia's kid, the boss's kid. Uh, Amelia Hawthorne, who you've discovered has a connection to necromancy and necromantic powers within the city of Rampoon. Uh, you guys have uh, basically gone looking around uh, and eventually have found the mausoleum of the Dead Crow uh, and utilizing some rather helpful gentlemen, though maybe not particularly um, trustworthy 100%, at least in their wares. Uh, they were nice enough to lead you to the Mausoleum of the Dead Crow, where you guys have descended, along with Durza, but one of the Orc Mafia members. As you guys descend into the Mausoleum of the Dead Crow, you discovered that it is home to a bunch of animals that are being kept in, in cramped cages, undead, 
uh, TVs possessed by ghosts, amongst other ghoulish and zombie-ish deities, or deities, sorry, um, entities, apologies. Uh, so, as you guys delve deeper into this very dark, decrepit space, uh, Tannis, you went to stealthily open a door, and the entire thing just fell off of the hindage and landed, crang, with a giant bang on the floor. So I would like everybody to roll initiative for me. Oh, yeah, that was funny. Also, Monty. Yes. <laughs> Since the tech evil and good is still active, at least it was when we ended the last session, do I detect any other undead than that visible one within this uh, area? From, from where your position is, you do, yes. All right. You detect I mean. one to the south of where your per, your position is. All right, so everybody roll up initiative for me. Uh, 17.1. That's really it's good for a eight. cleric. Four. 15. All right, let me roll for Durzub. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so Durzub got a natural one. No! To be fair, he is pretty shaken. He's also really behind in the current lineup of people. We have Tannis. We have Bryant. And we have Gibby. And then no matter what these guys roll. Okay. Sorry, I got a lot of papers out right now. Paper. Plus two, that's gonna put them right there. And poor, poor Durson. All right, so Kel, you were up first. You watch as the, the, uh, the door just clang lands on the ground. Notably, the space actually does have light to it. It's a very subtle blue sort of haunting light, uh, but it does give you vision of what you see ahead of you, albeit dimmed. But you don't immediately see an enemy. To your knowledge, there is basically no enemy. But I can detect them, so I know where they you are. You can, regardless. so yes, you would know, yeah. Then Kel is going to move forward, then move okay. up. And as he passes by Tannis, he's going to say, there is one to the south too, be ready. And Kel is going to, uh... I planned out what I wanted to do last time, but I can't remember what it was, so, uh... We're doing it live! <laughs> yep. I'm gonna smack him with a mace. Okay. That is a 16. A 16, that hits. <laughs> That is going to be five bludgeoning damage. All right, you swing around and you smack this thing across the face. This creature is a bit different. Um, it's almost, it is undead. It is definitely an undead humanoid body. Uh, the body is more primed. Um, and also notably on one arm, it's got like the sort of claws coming out of one side of its arm right now. Like one, it's kind of like um, heavier on one side where the other side is just kind of like bone and decrepit. Uh, you manage to swing around and bash them on the shoulder. Their body kind of cracks into the wall. All of you, the rest of you, hear as this happens. I uh, do five points of bludgeoning damage. Very nice. And that will be my turn, because I don't got anything else. All right, Tannis, it is now your turn. Okay. <laughs> Take a drink for stability. That's me. Uh, uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna rush in uh, over to the side. No, I'm gonna flank it, actually. Murder sandwich. Yep, I'm gonna walk in. I've, I heard there's another one to the south, so I'm going to just push myself up against the wall so it can't uh, sandwich me in turn. And I'm gonna take a swing at this thing with my long sword. Okay. You get plus two to hit because you're flanking. You're in a murder sandwich with Kel. <laughs> Let it go for me. It's paralyzing poison doesn't work on me for some reason. Uh, Two-handed longsword. Yeah. Gonna be that hits. Teen soft 20 with the plus two. Or five slashing. All right. You swing around slicing at its big arm and it kind of drags down the length of the arm. 
eventually coming to rest against the side of the wall, and you kind of resheath your blade as the creature <gasps> turns back, bearing large teeth that look like they've been surgically added to the mouth. And immediately, uh, on the upswing bonus action, I'm going to do an unarmed strike. I'm going to shove this. I'm going to shove the hilt of the sword into this thing's face. All right. Unarmed strike. Pow! It's going to be. Uh, 12? 12 just hits. All right. For six bludgeoning damage. Nice. You swing around and you you basically bring the hilt into its abdomen. It keels over and you bring down your elbow on its head. Uh, but it re-staggers back up to its feet, shaking off the blows. Blood, like black Icarus blood splattering against the walls and floor. This is a kitchen, you realize, as you guys stand in this space. Oh god. Alrighty, that brings us to this creature's turn. The creature, uh, though you hit it multiple times, its eyes are set on Kel. Uh, Fuck. It's going to make an attack against you, Kel. That's yep. not what I wanted. Eh. Uh, that, ooh, I think that's gonna hit that. Uh, 21. 21 to that, hit. Yeah, that hits. Alright. Need you make a constitution saving throw? Yep. Yeah, constitution saving throw for me, buddy. That is going to be a 14. All right, you get striked across the chest. Your your shield does nothing. It kind of like brings down the shield and brings down the claws with it. Uh, you are going to take... Uh, that's going to be eight points of slashing damage. Oof. As it slices down your front with these giant claws. That uh, is that heavy. That ends the creature's turn. Bryant, it is now your turn. <clears throat> I'm going to move up here, and I'm going to full defense. All right. Uh, Gibby, it is now your turn. Oh, ah, no, I need to move the marker. Still select it. Here we go. We should do it. Yes. I'll move up behind Bryant. Can I see the monster from here? Uh, You cannot, no. Damn it, so I can't. I can't use spells unless I can see him. Sorry, what was that? I mean, I can't, if I can't see him, I can't hit him with anything. I think we could share a square, so as long as you can see him from the door. No, she cannot occupy a square, but you can go through Brian. You can stand in front of Brian if you want to. I would have to go through into the room, though. You would, yes. Uh, I mean, I don't think that'd be smart. I really want to try something, but... Hey, Monty, if she well, can't... It's... I thought she could share a square with me. Can I take one more step in the room? Because I would have. I thought she could, like, shoot over my shoulder. Uh, I will I will allow the retcon, yes. Okay. okay, so I would have done that, so now you can see from so the door. So can I see from where he is, this, this spot now? Uh, from that spot, yes. You can see... You, I'll say you can peek around the corner, or, like, peek between, like, uh, between uh, uh, Brian's, like, body and his arm. <laughs> you mean, like, just, like, I'm going under your arm! Ah! Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, I'm going to use. Oh, know that since those TVs were having so much fun with it, I'm going to use vicious mockery. Okay. What do you say to this creature? Just going to be like, I'm done with this day. I'm just like, you look like shit. Okay. That's going to be a wisdom saving throw, I believe. Uh, just type that for you. That's not a very good one. Oh, shit. Well, it gets a nine. Yeah, as you say, you look like shit. It turns and, like, has a single tear. Like, this really gross... How does it have tear ducts? Wait a second. Dropping out of its eyes. Why does it have tear ducts, Monty? The necromancer was very thorough. I mean, it was human at one point. Yeah, but that's uh, the level of thorough that terrifies me. Words can hurt. <laughs> oh, well, most things terrify Bryant, so what are you gonna do? Alrighty. Look, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's unnerved by a lot of things. Um, yeah, I guess that's me then. That's your turn? Alright, that brings us around to Durzub. So it only took one psychic damage? It only took one psychic damage, but you did hurt its feelings quite badly. So. <laughs> Fireball. It'll have disadvantage on its next attack, so that's also that good. also is a plus. Yeah. 
Uh, alrighty, it is Durzib's turn. Durzib, uh, Gibby, as you're kind of like, you shoot off the spell, you look behind, and Durzib's got his eyes closed, and it looks like he's still carrying on a conversation with nobody else there, and he hasn't noticed. Durzib! Eh. Ah! He moves forward. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Isn't sure what was going on. Uh, Kel, it is now your turn. First thing we're going to do is free action talk. Right, there is one to the south as well. Be ready. And then I'm going to smack him with my mace. Alrighty. There is. Fine, right? 15. That hits. That's 17, technically. Five bludgeoning damage again. Nice. You swing down on him. Uh, oh, wait, that kills him. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> you and bash. for flavor, can I bash his head into his torso? Yes, absolutely. Like, like a whack-a-mole from hell, you bash this guy's head <laughs> down into his chest cavity. It's like, at first you're like, awesome, but then he starts like, to kind of bleed out like the world's crappiest geyser. Like, it's just kind of like, like kind of Ooh. pooling out, and it slopes over to the ground dead. That is messier than I thought. And with that, combat has ended. Yikes, Cal. Wait, but perception check to the south? Because he said there was one more? You There's see a door. A door. Right check out the door? Okay. No, wait a minute. Wait, no, fuck it. Check out I'm the door. Gonna... No, wait, what's, wait, the worst... gonna... what's the worst that could happen? Uh, well, should we look around the room first? Just nah, for it's totally a second? fine. Oh, God. Don't worry, Sarah. I, I do worry. I worry constantly. Does this creature yeah. look like it has anything on it? Anything? Loot-wise, no. no. It is stuff. It is nothing of any value, no. I was going to shake his mace a few times to get yeah. that blood off. Brian, can I, the um, door? Uh, wait, can I just... I just, just want to uh, turn to Durzib. Durzib, be good. Yeah, yeah, uh, fine. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I. Uh, that's my bad. We really, really need you here with us, okay? I, I know, I know. Sorry, I'm going to... Pat him on the shoulder. Okay, okay. You really had to tippy toe for that one, but <laughs> hey, if it makes him laugh, it's like Jesus Christ, I forgot you're tall. Mm. Thanks. He just kind of like gives Aww. you a nod. Me kind of chews you forward. Uh, Brian, you opening the door? Uh, yeah. I'm I'll gonna open. I'm gonna hang where I am, just in the doorway, just in case. <laughs> uh, the kitchen is imagine a frat house where they never clean ever. Oh. Ew. Like, take out boxes from floor to ceiling with maggots writhing in them. Um, the sink is filled with dishes that probably haven't been cleaned for, like, a year. Yeah. It is really gross in here. Um, you, Bryant, you run over and you open the door? Yep. Okay. Why do you do this to me, Roll20? They changed their lighting system. Yeah, you mentioned that, light. like, what did they do differently? They changed the dynamic lighting and they've swapped oh. around some tool stuff, but it's not super major. Uh, as you enter in, you see a bedroom with a really kind of straw cot bed. Um, oops, Jesus, oh, does that again? Um, uh, a straw cot bed, um, piles of books, um, and in a glass jar um, is one of those little lights that you remember seeing when you were captured by the orcs, Bryant. Is it the same one that was with the girl? Yes, it was. It was exactly the same one. As you see, it actually kind of like knocks against the glass, like kind of making it almost rock side to side, like almost panicked. Brian's going to walk in. Uh, as Things you get closer... Mm -hmm. hmm? Go ahead. Uh, as you get closer to it, you can be able to hear like this little voice, but you can't make out words. It's just like these ambient whispers almost like kind of reaching out as it kind of knocks in and out of uh, the space. Oh, what's the matter? You stuck? It kind of knocks into the glass even more and almost like dancing around as if it's speaking to you, but you have no idea what it's saying. Yeah, see, so here's the problem. Your little buddy has already shocked me twice and we already took him out. So you should probably stop trying to bang the glass because it's going to end the same for you. Knock it off. The light dims and it kind of like floats backwards, almost patiently, like doing as you say. Where's the girl? Uh, it begins to knock into the glass uh, northward, like as if to try and show you, but it's caught in the glass. It can't get out. <sighs> I'm going to take this glass off. If you shock me, I'm going to kick your ass. Are we clear? The 
little ball of, of light moves up and down, up and down, up and down, slowly. Vertically or horizontally? Uh, vertically. Okay, cool. So there's no answer. there's no space horizontally. Okay. It's like a like 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 a Pringles can, almost made out of glass. I can't really sense motive without being able to hear it, so I'm gonna lift the glass off. All right, so you go over to the lid. Uh, roll an athletic check because it's very tight. Okay. Uh, fifteen. Nice. All right. You take your hand, and you like twist it. Imagine, a, speaking of pickles, imagine like a super narrow Pringle sized pickle jar. You take your hand and you just uh, uh, until it pops open and the light kind of like floats out, almost like a moth being released from a from a jar. It kind of like sway, like staggers and then kind of refloats up again. And now Thank we're going to go find Amelia. <laughs> Where is she? Uh, the little wisp moves Brian's over. Follow it. And goes into the kitchen. Okay. And then it phases through the refrigerator. What? But we can't. Wait, this. Brian's going to run down this hallway because he saw it. Well, wait, 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 wait. Check the fridge. Maybe we can. Maybe there's a passage or something. Kill is yeah, going I'll... to open the refrigerator door. Brian's going to go to the door. He's stupid. All right, you're going to open the door. Uh, as you open the door, Bryant, it is a broom closet. Where the hell did it go? Let's check the fridge. Kel so is, is there, a, can we investigate it or anything? Uh, yeah, Kel, you, you go and you just grab your hands on the door. And it's like, it's, you pull and pull, but there's like a huge amount of like suction to it. And you can't vacuum. see it. Yeah, there's a vacuum to it. Mm. Hmm. Can we Not roll an investigation check? That means this is airtight, which is strange for refrigerators. I think there's something behind it. A secret tunnel. Oh, sorry, yeah. there should not be something. Hey, let me... Hey, he kind of waves towards you, Tennis. He kind of rolls up. You watch his jersey kind of rolls up his sleeves. Well, let's crack it open! Wait, wait, can, can I, I roll, wisp, can I roll, roll investigation on it real quick? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I just want to... Monty, they can see this thing? No, but they they know that they saw where you were looking, and it did go right. through the refrigerator. And okay, good. Out, All right, so cool. Oh, that's like a oh, natural great. one plus four. Natural I see nothing. One. Welcome to the club, Gibby. As as the big guys are like kind of like you know <laughs> like all all the buff like macho like <laughs> for some reason Tannis just like grows like three times in size and just becomes wide. Um, you're like I gotta yeah. see. I have to see the the. Fridge, you're just trying to see, but you can't get a good look in, so you kind of give up. <laughs> hey, guys! Uh, what? Yes? I can't... I think there might be a secret tunnel in here, but I can't find it. Come, come back here. We're going to try and move the fridge and see if there's something behind it. It went through the fridge. Right, yeah, no, I was just enough. testing y'all. We believe okay. you. Uh, Durs of Kel and Tannis, everybody roll an athletics check for me. Tannis' hands are sort of shaky and pale. <sighs> oh, that's right. Then I'm going to slap Tannis on the shoulder and give him guidance. Oh, boy. Athletics, right? You yes. can do it, Tannis. I believe in you. I you still have the fall of Tannis. I still have a plus one in this either way. So. Athletics. Athletics. 17. 17. Nice. Oh, wait, I got a nine. Poop. Uh, Durs have got an 11. Uh, so the three of you each grab like the, 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 the handle of the fridge and you all pull. And as you guys are pulling, like you guys are like, like you're sweating. Um, you hear a, a large breaking, like a crack noise, as you guys have ripped off the handle to this fridge. Oh. oh. So it's still oh. closed. It is still closed, yeah. Um, what are you doing? There's got to be some sort of switch or something to open this. Monty, this is a fridge, like a... Uh, it's uh, like an like a old 80s, like, probably lead-lined fridge. So it's Excuse like me. what would be used... It's an industrial fridge, not a normal fridge. Yeah, it's like it's like an old like an old housewife fridge that's pink so, and faded. so is it locked? Is that why the handle wouldn't turn? Don't know. It's just is not it opening. freestanding or is it set in the wall? It is freestanding in the kitchen. Can I investigate but the you door to can't, see? Oh. You can't see between the wall. It's like right up against the wall. So can, can I investigate um, to see if it's locked? Uh sure, yeah, I'd say. Because Gibby attempted was failed by muscles. <laughs> 
11. 11, okay. Uh, as you look around, you don't see any locking mechanism on this, so you're a bit befuddled. You don't know how, um, how to open this. How can thick I is investigate the, field? the bedroom for something? For anything? Sure, absolutely. If you want to try go this again, see if I can do a little better. Roll uh, an investigation check. Uh, seven. That is a little better. All right. Little better. Uh, it you is a mess. You are looking through papers, but it's a language you don't understand. You don't understand what language this is. Um, I will take those papers and come out and just be like, um, does anyone understand what language this is written in? What language is it written in again? It is written in Elvish. Perfect! He raises his hand. Yeah, it's uh, Elvin. Oh, snap! You speak Elvish? <sighs> Slow turn. <laughs> oh my god. Just everybody's just like, Gil buries his face in his hands. I'm just going to be like, here, here, Tannis. Uh, maybe there's something on him. Hold on. Why am I? I didn't assume. Whatever. I can't believe this. Okay. Let me take a look at it. Okay. Uh, as you read through, a lot of it's like the scrawlings of like a mad scientist. Um, a lot of like notes about tests. A lot of notes about um like certain ingredients components spell elements but nothing that you can really make heads or tails of and it's like he stops writing mid-sentence um eventually you get to a point where you flip through it's a book that that uh, she found um there is a photo a, a really creepy photo um and uh it appears to be of Amelia from like behind, uh, and she's currently like holding her hand to uh, to Yagnar, and they're walking somewhere. You're not sure where. Um, and he notes the child, one of the children of the fifteen, um, and new propositions, new plans, uh, purposeful vessels, transference. Um, and something about a curse. He keeps mentioning um, a Casmodian curse um, that befouls me and doesn't specify, and it's it's very eclectic and hard to read. Um, but you do notice as you flip through, eventually you reach that symbol that you've seen before, um, and note it's a note saying, this is the key to all of the sacred chambers. Oh. Mm. It's that symbol again. Apparently, this is a key to all of the sacred chambers. He quotes with his fingers. Well, if it worked on the last door, maybe let's paint it on the fridge and see what happens. Maybe we do have a good source of uh, ink, for lack of a better term. The, the ghoul. To the ghoul body. <laughs> yeah, the ghoul is like there's like a sizable puddle that's kind of uh, dirtied your guys' feet at this point. It is um, like a, a fountain pen, just a little fountain of blood. Also, before I forget, can I roll an arcana check on this curse he talks about? Sure, yeah, I'd say go ahead and roll a roll a curse check. With, uh, I'd say with disadvantage. Soft 20. I was going to give you disadvantage. I'll let you keep the 20. Um, based on what he's saying, it's very clearly it's something necromantic in, in, in nature. If it's by Chasmodius, based off the information you managed to pertain um it's probably extremely powerful um and three it's something necromancy so you don't know exactly what it does uh -huh. does anybody no. know about necromancy stuff that can roll on this got me Dursips okay. just shrugs like donkey kong and smash well, brothers i was saying that above game because it'd be funny to be like guys roll on this would you talk in game. I, I, I would invite you guys to talk more in game for this episode and future episodes about stuff in the game because there's a lot of talking outside of the game. I want you guys to talk a bit more in character if possible. Beats me. I... Can I take a roll for it? Considering sure. some of my spells are necromancy and I'm a cleric. I would say roll Return religion. Roll a religion check, I'd say. Oh, good. I wish this was wisdom. 11. 11. Uh, I mean, you've you've heard of your fair share of curses. Um, this one, because he doesn't specify his symptoms ever, you have no idea what it does. I mean, I guess if it's a pretty powerful curse, he wants to break it. That might be why he wants Amelia. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, I guess we should try and get this fridge open. If it's anything like the last door, there will be a specific spot we need to paint it. So Kel is going to reach out and touch the fridge and cast Spare the Dying. 
Should I have the dying? As you do so, the symbol does not appear. It, free, it appears that it has to be freehand drawn based uh, on memory. I'll yeah. pull out my uh, calligrapher's tools. Oh, we got so, the picture at least, so that's nice. At least we know ahead. that's how you open doors. Go ahead and roll a uh, calligrapher's tools check for me. Here I go. 15. Okay. Yeah, you managed to remember the design. You have it for reference, but like the exact sizing and whatnot, you managed to draw on a somewhat curved fridge. As you do so, you guys hear kind of like the sound of a, like, I'm going to keep using pickle references, but like when you open up a jar and you hear that, or like a snapple, and you just hear that thunk, like that thunk kind of noise. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll keep this on standby then. <laughs> We'll have to look up what a snapple is later. It's like a it's like an apple juice drink that you get, but they're like vacuum sealed. Ah. Adult apple juice. Alright. I ch I tr I hook my fingers underneath it since there's no handle and I'll pry it open. Alright, as you do so, the plastic like as you open it, um, Almost as if someone had dropped, like, lined the entire fridge with, like, Sprite and left it at, like, a lukewarm temperature. The entire thing, like, you watch the strands of, you have no idea what, like, a snot string kind of rolls open as the door is open. There's this, like, net of, of grossness. And you uh. watch as kind of loading forward is just, like, guts and things that have not been kept. Uh, it smells like a meat locker that has been left at like Ugh. 80 degrees Fahrenheit for those Americans out there. Uh, and mm -hmm. in high humidity temperature, you watch as like a lung, a set of lungs kind of tumbles out with just like half of it covered in like this green fuzz. It is Ugh. awful. <laughs> I close it immediately. All right, you <laughs> close it up and take a breath. Uh, I guess someone couldn't catch their breath. Hang on a second. It um, went in there. We need to get in there. Open the door. Oh. Fucking just shove it aside. He watches Tursen's like holding his nose and backing up. Bryce is going to go in and he's going to push the thing out of the way because this All is where right. the thing went. Go ahead and quickly roll a constitution saving throw for me, Bryant. Sure. <laughs> 13. Okay. You shove the stuff you take with your hands. You kind of dig out <laughs> the flesh and manage to clear a path. <sighs> I was going to try to use precipitation to, like, make a nice as smell. You, as you shove aside, you begin to hear noises up ahead, Brian, of chanting, of a single person talking and chanting. I'm going to motion for people to follow and move closer. You can right. actually just clean it with prestidigitation. That is true also. As you push it aside, you see a humanoid figure uh, standing a fair distance off. Oh, shit. In front of... Almost like floor to stealing stacks of coffins. I'm gonna reveal this to the audience. All good? Yep. Nope, he is beyond my range. Um, as you like kind of like shift over you see that little little light kind of dance and then disappear into the wall hmm. brian's gonna pull out his sword and he's just gonna start marching all right yeah, we'll follow wait do i still have detect i mean obviously there's magic but do i still have detect magic up uh you do and the the chamber up ahead is oozing magic as you reach that point, Brian, you watch as the individual turns and looks. You see a hollow human humanoid. Their cheekbones are sucked in. Their teeth, some of them are missing. They're wearing a sort of a long robe-like hoodie that runs down uh, their back. They're wearing a like sort of loosely draped um, old... Uh, what was probably once a button-up shirt that is now open and underneath is which is like a black tank top. Um, their legs are covered in dirty, grimy, like, sweatpants, and they are wearing a set of, like, croc sandals. You watch as they turn to you and see you, and they go, No, the ritual's not complete. Get out of here! I need everyone to roll initiative for me. Oh, God. Since I'm in range, do I get any kind Six. of, uh, 
undead feeling from him, Monty. Also, did uh, you say he's oh, wearing yeah. Crocs? Yeah, he's wearing like the. Oh, he's a dead man there. again. I rolled a natural one. Oh, that's all right. It's not like Tannis is gonna roll below a. There it is. Fifteen. What is this song? Hold on. Uh, six. Sure, let's do this. I'm not rolling great today. All right, T. Welcome you do have to the, the ability club. To fix that for yourself, Sarah. Welcome to the club. Yes, I want to. I don't want to waste that. I'm gonna say Dursa, but I only get one. Well, that depends. That's up to Monty. Uh, yeah, you can use your ties to chaos whenever you want, but I'm gonna say not for this. I would say for like in tackle or something, because. Makes more sense. Makes more sense, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say, all right, so Tannis. And then, who has the higher, oh, it's Gibby. Gibby. Bryant. Uh, and then poor Kel. Roll 20 giveth, roll 20 taketh away. Yeah, that's the Word, way of though. It's the way of D&D, &D, my friend. All right, Durzub. Oh, fuck me. Turns it broke terribly, too. Uh, and then the enemies. Uh, Alrighty. So, start of the turn order. Immediately, Brian, as you come forward, you hear the sound of panting, and you watch as a undead creature runs from around the corner where you couldn't see. Uh, it looks like it was stationed behind the wall. In fact, I'm just going to reveal the whole area here now because you're I was about to say, how many do I detect? Uh, as it turns the corner, you detect it, but remember, your detect evil and good does not go through a foot yeah, of, one like, foot of stone. one foot of stone, so you didn't detect these guys. Um, it's going to charge you, Bryant. Okay. Uh, and that is going to be a... That's probably going to hit. Uh, that's going to be a soft 20 to hit you. That'll hit. Alrighty. Da, da, da. I can't see my dice. Uh, that is going to be six points of slashing right. damage to you, and I need you to roll a constitution saving throw for me. Uh, con save. That is 13. All right, you manage to you feel your body almost tensing with rigor mortis, but you manage to just like flex it and shake it off and kind of <laughs> shake your head. Uh, this other creature beckons to the side. As you look at this creature, um, one of its arm has been replaced with what looks like the large leg of like a crocodile, like some sort of like lizard-like creature on one mm -hmm. side. Its head is like a wolf, but it's like pointing straight up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, and its other hand is like a human hand that's again been bulked up with like these long claws coming out of it. It's a really disgusting creature. You watch as this other individual like kind of does a sharp whistle and the other undead creature kind of comes to his side uh, and he sees you. So he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna probably cast this. That's gonna be... Uh, he reaches his hand out and you watch as he says, none of you will interfere. And he flexes his hand and a dark power coalesces from him. Uh, he is going to, yeah, he's going to put it right here. Fuck. He's going to cast Hunger of Hadar on you guys. Great. What does that do? No. That saving throw. it sucks. Let me put it that way. Fucking damn it! It's gonna occupy. Oh, I just drew a big line over Durzub. Durzub, you're out of the match. Uh, sorry. Give me one second here. Draw shape. All right. Bam! Right there, where that purple square is. How far? Uh, from the end of that purple square to where he is. What's the length of that? Five, ten, feet. He's twenty feet away, unless he's in the air. He's not in the air. So yeah, so, he's twenty wait. feet away from what? So this whole distance from from the end of this purple, yeah. Show oh, me. that end. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, Sorry. show me. Oh. My end. 
and it's gonna be probably is... 65 70 feet you were 50 feet away from him if you're wondering yeah okay so each square is like what? Is it five, five feet? feet. Five, yep. five feet. Yeah, each square okay. is five feet. I'm just gonna reveal everything to make life easier for myself. Yep, Alrighty. it is six it's sixty feet. From the square that's first in purple to him is sixty feet. So as you guys see this creature point a finger at you, mm -hmm. uh, you watch as the floor begins to melt under your feet. Dark undead ichor that flowed out of those ghouls begins to pool around you, almost going past your knees. You watch as a void comes out, and these whispers, the same whispers you heard in those TVs, begins to echo out, and it becomes completely pitch dark as this darkness swallows all of you. You then begin to feel as tentacles grow from the walls and ceilings and grip out and reach for you. Uh, and that is their turn. You watch as he immediately turns around and uses his standard action to begin talking. You watch as he pulls forth the corpse of a raccoon forward. You see the wall adjacent to where you guys were. Like, Brian, you would have seen this. Mm -hmm. But the uh, eastern wall from floor to ceiling is filled with, with um, upright coffins that seem to be channeling his power. Got it. Uh, that ends his turn. All of you guys, I'm just going to read the spell real quick. Alrighty. So you guys are all blinded. You have the blinded effect. Are we blinded as long as we're in the range of this? As long as we're within the purple, then yes. Okay. Alrighty, I'm just going to find blinded. A blinded creature can, can't see and automatically fails any ability check that relies on sight. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Awesome. All right. Let's get double check and make sure. All right. And you guys have a knee deep ichor to deal with, too. So that area is also difficult terrain. Yup. All righty. That ends his turn. It is his turn. Sorry. Uh, Tannis, it is now your turn. Okay. Uh, Monty, there's another part of that spell that you, I don't know if you're using. It has Hi. to do with when you, where your turn is. Yeah, it's it's at the start of the creature's turn. Oh, it's his turn. Cool. Awesome. It's the start of, no, it's the start of your turn. So it's, That's what I thought. So that means yeah. all of us, if we start in this. So, Tannis, you start mm -hmm. your turn. I need you to make a, uh, one second. Oh, you don't make get to make a saving throw. It's only if he ends turn. it in the in the thing. That's right. It's only if he ends it. Yep. All right. But if he starts it, it's something else. Oh, that is lame. Uh, Tannis, you take uh, four points of acid damage as one of these tentacles, like like out of nowhere, grips you around the neck and pulls you down into the ichor and burns your skin. But you manage to like struggle and break yourself free of its grasp. Ugh. Oh, sorry, it's cold damage. My bad. You start your turn, you get cold damage. It's icy to the touch. I apologize. Oof. Ooh, yay. Also, sorry, uh, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to backseat me. game that, but that was a key All thing right, to the so spell. This is, is going to be... Stop? No, I, I, I just read that it's it's when you start your turn there and when you end it, not just automatically. You don't automatically yep. take the damage, but you do actually take damage at the start your turn. So. Okay, so my 45 would get me there. <sighs> But there's an enemy in that space, so you cannot bypass them. If I go diag, can I go diagonally and get around that way? Uh, I'm gonna say no because he is blocking. He is intending to block the entrance, so no. Shit. Oh god, I can't get around him. Then I can't. I I can't do shit. You can hold your action. Or hold your turn. That's true. You can, I don't want to stay in here. Uh, I would. Uh, like, you, you could take okay. the shove action. I'd say if you want to take the shove action and try and move him back, I would allow that to happen. Um, there you yeah, go. You could just push all of us forward one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm gonna say you like run against the wall and if, you can um, do the shove if action. If Tannis holds his turn, do I go next? I'm strength drained, so that would probably not be end up well for me. Can I? Fuck it. You know what? Uh, can I jump over them? 
jump over them uh, to do like all, like over the enemy. I'm going to jump over Kel. Well, all of them if I can. I'm going to try and get out of this room. I'm gonna say roll an acrobatics check to attempt that. That'll Could take your action. That will take your action to do though. Hey man, that's not a bad idea. I I would I would like to argue something here real quick. Uh, could I use Step of the Wind because it doubles my jump distance? Yes, you may. Okay. Bonus action, going to use a key point to use Step of the Wind to double my jump distance, and I'm going to try and leap yeah. frog over Kel, uh, Bryant, and possibly the ghoul as well. All right. Okay. Well, go ahead and roll. Uh, it's going to be acrobatics, you said? Acrobatics, yeah. 25. Nice. You clear it with yeah. ease. You 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 kind of do like a run wall, and then as one of the tentacles reaches out to grab you, you grab onto it and swing like Indiana Jones. <laughs> slide over as the ghoul reaches up to scratch you with its claws and land on the circle. And the deathlock turns and snarls as he sees you land. That does take your action though. Fuck. And I use my, bon my bonus action to step the wind too. Fuck. Yeah. Yep. So no, hey, turn. but at least you're you're out of there though. All right. Yeah, that's my turn. All right, Gibby, it is now your turn. All right. But before your turn starts, you're gonna take some damage. I figured. Oh, that's better. You take seven points of cold damage as you are grabbed and like pulled, and the icy, chilling touch just freezes your skin instantly. Ouch. Okay. <sighs> All right, um, so I can't go past Durza, can I? Uh, you can go through allies, yes. Can't, do I have enough room to leave this thing? I want to put myself here. There, yes, you do. Cool. So when, when, it's when it's difficult now, wait, terrain, no, wait. It's, it's double. Okay, so and if I do you, that, will I be unblinded? Will uh, I be able you, to see down that hallway? No, it is darkness in there, so... Um, well, considering I'm soft and squishy, I'm going to go Wait, who anyway. has the night vision goggles? Didn't I give them back to you? Would I be able to use the night vision? I think I do. Would that help me at all you in have magic darkness? Them. You have them attached and it does not work on in this. In this well, space. I'm soft and squishy and also just took seven points of damage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway, just so I yeah, don't. It does, it does specify in the spell that no light, magical or otherwise, can illuminate the area Fair at all. Enough. So, yeah, even magical effects don't affect it, so. I'm right. soft and squishy and have low hit points, so I'm gonna as, get out of range of that. As you run out, Gibby, you, you like kind of pull as if you're like going through brambles and ripping off the tentacles, which splat to the ground and kind of rither up and die like almost fast moving slugs. All right, um, now show me again the range from where I am feet to, to, the, to the zombie. 50 feet to the zombie and 65 to him. Yeah. And I have to shoot blind. Good luck. Um, well, I really won't get it, that fucking zombie out of the way, so... Um... All right, Scorching Ray. All right, you kind of climb up uh, onto the table in the kitchen where you've retreated to, and you you know basically where the enemies are, and you throw out. You're going to throw out three Scorching Rays. Toward... Um, can I separate the uh, amount? I would yes, like to target the zombie twice and the guy in the middle once. All right. And this will, let me see here. Um, let's go ahead for a level three. All right. So I have to hit it, right? Yep, so first one, uh, for I'm gonna say ghoul. Uh, that hits. The first one actually hits. Oh! You nice. Flex your hand and you watch as the fire just disappears into this void of darkness. It doesn't even illuminate the area. It just like phoom, vanishes. Um, go ahead and roll damage on that. That is 2d6. Yeah. Roll 2d6. If you cast Scorching Ray at Eight. a higher level, does it does it improve Eight. damage dice at all? Um it, you increase beams? you increase the number of rays you get to use, I believe. Okay. At level three? At level three, yeah, it should specify in the spell. Um, it just says when you cast this. Oh, I get one additional ray then because I'm at level three. 
Exactly, yeah. So you, um, get, you get four can of I, them. Can I decide who I want to hit one at a time, or do I have to do it ahead of time? So you had two on the ghoul that's closest to your allies that's blocking the hallway, one on the death lock, and then where do you want do to send I, the fourth do I have to? Do I have to decide that ahead of time? Yes, you do. Um... I'll target the ghoul with a third. Okay. He's the one I want to get out of the way. Smart. All right. So you're going to do three on the ghoul in the front and then one on the death lock. All right, so second first shot. first one was the ghoul, right? Yeah, first one's on the ghoul. You, Gibby, you're not sure if you hit until you hear screaming and Tannis, the rest of you guys don't see it, but Tannis, you watch as this, as this ghoul turns to look at you, Tannis, you watch as his head's just ignited. The wolf hair is singeing and burning as it howls and snarls in agony but it is still standing and shakes its head off, getting rid of the embers and stares down towards you. Okay, second ray number two. Oh, oh, no! oh my God. It's a 16, it's fine, it's a 16. <clears throat> Disadvantage, natural 20, but 16 on the other side, but it does still hit, so go ahead. And Let's go. Hit. It's still good, it's still good. Okay, yeah, so the right side is a disadvantage, I keep forgetting. Yeah. That would have been nice though, man. You take, what, you take the lower number every you time, the lower but you're still hit twice. Yeah. I all mean, right, you still right, have tides right. of chaos when you choose to use it. True. 12. Oh, oh goodbye. God. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Give me his popping. Max damage. Mm. Max damage scorching ray reduces this creature to cinders. <laughs> you now strike it. You watch as its mouth curls open. Uh, Tannis, as you're kind of staggering back, this creature turns to you and you watch as it's like the wolf mouth like opens, but then keeps opening all the way down the neck, revealing this almost like Five Nights at Freddy's set of teeth within teeth within teeth inside as it turns towards you. And as it opens its mouth, you watch as streaking from the hallway, a scorching ray blast hits it directly in the mouth and it <gasps> explodes into fire and just staggers back a stump of a head <sighs> onto the ground. <sighs> okay, so do I still have to use my third? Do I lose you my third? Use your third shot, so just roll, 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 roll your third shot. So what is it aiming at? You'll find out, go ahead and roll your third shot. Oh. 23. Jesus oh my God. God. What is wrong with you? Oh my God. But that Two might be really bad. Yeah, but uh, you're, you're oh. As you flex your hand out and you cast another Scorching Ray, Tannis, you watch as it streaks where the ghoul would have been passed and crashes into the coffins of which begin to catch fire. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> That's good, right? Because they were giving him his power. Roll 20. See, I told you, roll 20 is only giving know. you that 20 because oh, you have disadvantage. And then, advantage. I, I have to roll, and then have to one roll? more for the death lock. Go ahead and roll oh, the hit I'm not rolling lock. damage for the coffins? Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, do roll damage for the coffins. Cool. Ignore what the... is going on? Don't don't mock it. Don't mock it. I'm not. I'm just confused. Seven. Seven. There you go. Yeah, they're not really bursting. Like they're not like like flame, but some of them are catching right now as the as the Deathlock is not paying attention. He's looking back towards the elf that's just crashed the party. Uh, and you have one more for the Deathlock. So go ahead and roll the hit. Come on, roll twenty. One more. Nine. Oh. Nine. No. Unfortunately, it streaks past and misses. Still. That Still, was okay. you don't know if you succeeded or not, too, over on the other side. Oh. Like, well, that worked. <sighs> Alrighty, that brings us good turn, Sarah. Oh, Jesus shit. Christ. Good Sorcerer start to Scorching Amy. Ray. Sorcerer good start to Scorching Ray. All right, Brian, it is now your turn. You are in darkness. You're going to take damage. Okay. Uh, that is going to be... Uh, if I can't mess. Seven points of cold damage to Ow. you. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And all you hear are whispers and the feeling of this icy touch on your body. All right. Well, I'm going to move forward because this thing is dead. Okay. So that's good. So that was one. You step forward, stamping down on the ghoul's dead body. And honestly, now I'm running towards this motherfucker. Fuck it. Let's go. All right. Uh, But I'm going here because I'm not stupid. Uh, All right. And now I'm gonna swing at him. All right. Ha! Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Uh, that hits. I was gonna say if that doesn't hit, we're done. We're just gonna eleven. Oh. We're just so dead. Oh, oh my god! Eleven <laughs> points of damage. One second. Uh, and then Monty, hold on, hold on, uh, bonus action, shield of faith. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I need to do math first. All right. 
Okay. And you Getting slice really into him, but he seems to resist your sword's damage. He does take damage, but he seems resistant to it. Uh, is it similar to what we saw with the other creatures? Um, You're not sure. Maybe. Okay, because I did see when they were attacking stuff, uh, the little fey creature, I saw that the attacks weren't effective. Is it similar to that? Uh, Not one-to-one. -one. It's a bit different. Okay, but I can tell that it was a clean strike, but he resisted it a bit. Because yeah, I just want to know if I can say it in, like, in game terms. There seems to be not only a natural resistance, but a magical buffer as well. Something you've seen Gibby use before. Got it. Oh, he's hey. a armor. Yes, but I can't. Hey, he's resistant to the swords. <gasps> I'm just going to say that out loud. And then bonus action, Shield of Faith. All right, he turns down to you and says, Stop interfering, please! Uh, it is now... Durzab's turn. Durzab. Uh, oh, fuck me. Jesus. Max uh, damage. 11 points of damage. Oof. Good thing I healed him last time. Yeah, good fucking thing you healed him. That would have probably knocked him to zero. How's he doing now? Uh, not great. Um, I'm gonna roll... Oh, God. He can move with aggressive, but he can't see his target, so he's gonna move back. He, he's making the smart decision. He's backing off, because he can't see. He comes running out, and he's like... There's frost all over him. He just kind of shakes and shudders and goes, We gotta get in there! Are you okay? I'm fine! Amelia, though! Where is she? I don't know yet. We're gonna... We'll figure something out. Also, Monty. Yeah. Uh, for chance, is that spell he used on us, Hunger of Adar, a concentration spell? Because if he got hit, that'd be yeah, a concentration right. check. It is concentration. concentration. Yeah. That is true. I was just curious, because it seems like the kind of thing that would be. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, he got a 13. He's fine. Because it's half of the damage, so it would be 5, but the maximum is 10. So he has to just pass 10, and he did with the 13, yep. so he's fine. Yeah. You watch as he kind of staggers, but keeps his focus. Uh, that ends Durzab's turn because he has no idea what to do in this situation. Um, that brings us to Kel. It is now your turn. You are in complete darkness and you're going to take some damage. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to take eight points of cold damage reduced in half to four because you are a white dragon. Born. Yep. So, there you go. Still not great. Still I like how you were like, click. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really uncomfortable. It's, it's cold enough to bother you, which is something. You've never really experienced that before. It is supernatural in nature, so it makes sense. Oh, so Monty, I still have uh, Detect Evil and Good on, yes? Yes, you do. So I can't see him, but I can detect exactly where he is. Uh... If he's classified as undead. Cliss, click the spell for me and just see um, if it notes a pinpoint location. Uh... You can tell where okay, the so as well Okay, so as well as where the creature is located. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so you do know exactly where he is. Through, so through those mean spells that typically require me to see would still work, or would they not? Well, seeing you, and knowing where something is are different. Is different. I, you have yeah, to, if, if, it, if, it's to, a if you were to step based, forward, you'd be fine. If it was oh, a right, sight-based spell, then we'll know. But if it's just like, like you know, like a to hit spell, like a magical-based attack, like, you know, like a, like a firebolt, I would say yes. But if it's like a creature you can see, I'm going to say no, you don't get that. Because it doesn't show you the creature. You just get a general idea of where they are. You know where they are, but you don't know exactly where they are. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfectly fine, because this says a creature of my choice within range. Okay, there you go. Guiding me also, before I even move. Oh, fuck nice. me. Nice. 15. Uh, fuck! That, that just hits him. <gasps> All right, this and that is, is going to be 10 radiant damage. Yeah, that hurts him. And it also uh, means whoever attacks him next, before the end of my next turn, has advantage on the attack. You Seems swing out that. and you strike him in the center of his chest, and he staggers back with this giant dart, uh, and he glows. Um, Kel, Gibby, and Durzab cannot see this, but uh, Bryant and Tannis, you absolutely can see this. He also took uh, damage, so that's another con check. That's another con check, so he's going to do that. Uh, 18, he still maintains. Fuck. And then Kel is just going to saunter out of the darkness using his movement. So that's 10 for that square. 
Okay, yeah. five. You're good. You made it. You're fine. Then I'm going to move right here. All right. Gonna just walk right up to him. Okay. That's gonna bring us around back to the enemy's turn. Uh, let's see here. So immediately this ghoul uh, is going to attack you, Cal. It's gonna move over and attack you. Yep. Actually, no, it's, it's gonna stay in space and it's gonna attack you. Uh, this one is is has the head of a crocodile, but it's like too weirdly like heavy on the face that it's like sloped down and the eyes are like set forward. It's very strange. Um, and it's fucked up to beyond belief as well. Uh, it's gonna make an attack against you. It actually unhinges its jaw and tries to bite you. Uh, God, that was almost a 20, but it's still really good. That is a soft 20 to hit you. 16. Soft 20 does hit. Bad yeah, day sorry. for Kale. It was almost a natural 20. I literally watched it and went, Pfft. All right. Uh, uh that is gonna be six points. Wait, sorry. Uh, that's going to be eight points of piercing damage to you as it bites down on your body. This thing is pretty huge. Alrighty, that is going to be that ghoul's turn, and the Deathlock is going to cast Hunger of Vidar a second time. He's going to drop Concentration, and he's going to recast it. Yep, that'll fit the space. You watch as he turns and says, Stop interrupting the ritual! And he is going to drop Hunger of Vidar right into the actual ritual space itself. Yep. We need to break that concentration. Yep. Boom. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, that ends his turn. Uh, Gibby, you now see the darkness receding and almost moving like sludge flows down the hallway and begins to pull up the space up ahead. Tandis, as you step back, uh, your leg hits the ghoul that gets just pulled into this void and disappears in the ichor. So, but I still can't see him, even though I can see the hallway now. No, you don't, unfortunately. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Tannis, it is now your turn. So, we're blind again, right? You are blind again, yes. But you have a general idea of where he is. Okay. And if you attack him, you have advantage, which will counter your disadvantage. Yeah. He is he is still glowing. Technically, I'll allow it, because it is holy. I'm going to say... I'm going to say, yeah, it's Guiding Bolt. I'll let you do it. There's Someone could argue back and forth. I'm going to say yes, because you, you hit, hey, and yeah. Connor, you can move through my square, by the way. Yeah, doesn't matter, though. I have more than enough movement to get I was going to say, him. I think you're fine. All right. Now, how does blindness affect the murder sandwich? Uh, Blindness, you still have plus two. You just have disadvantage. Fuck. But it's, a, it's advantage, so it balances out. So, Tannis, you just have a straight roll. Okay. So... I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say, stop what you're doing and call off your guard dogs now. Last okay. warning. Are you, trying to right? are you trying to persuade here? Or what are you trying to do? Uh, yeah. Are you trying to persuade? <laughs> will, that, will that take my action? Will that take my action to persuade him? Or I will say your bonus action to try and persuade him. Mm. Fuck it then. No. I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it? Okay. Uh I'll just I'll just tell him stop it now. And uh long sword, two-handed. Alright. Uh, no. Thirteen, unfortunately. 15. You go to 15. you go fifteen. Oh yeah, fifteen, because plus two. Yeah, that hits plus them. Two. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Whew. Damage is gonna be Oh god. Slashing. <laughs> Come on, break that concentration, please. That's gonna be the big one here. Rolling concentration. That's please. Five. It drops. Yes! 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 Let's go, Tannis! You watch as the tentacles recede into the floor in the centermost point of the circle, and you watch as the Deathlock grips his head. Uh, this black acre is bleeding down. Uh, he seems very panicked. Uh, and looks directly at you, Tannis, like, kind of wide-eyed. The effect of Guiding Bolt has dropped, so no one has advantage on an attack rolls against him anymore. We're also not blind. 
You also are not blind, and you're also not going to fucking take damage. Though, Tannis, you were supposed to take damage at the beginning of your turn, so I'm going to have to Yes, I was wondering when that was going to happen. Yeah, sorry, it's distributed. Uh, seven points of cold damage to you. Oof! Yeah, that sucks, but I'm all right. Yeah, if you were knocked uh, out, I would have to redo that turn, but that's okay. Okay. Figure up. okay. Now, <sighs> cracking my knuckles here, I'm going to swing once with the sheath at his head. All right. Unarmed attack. And I'm blowing my final key point to make this flurries of blows. Okay. Unarmed strike. You want everything. Plus two. 21. That is. 23. <laughs> for eight bludgeoning damage. Okay. That definitely hurts him. That's for sure. One more. Uh, bring it down the, the hilt of the sword onto his nose. All right. As you as you start by striking him, you watch as he staggers backwards, almost knocking into hill and goes, No, please stop. And you swing again. Go ahead and roll damage. Five bludgeoning. Five points of damage. Nice. You punch him in the face again. And he staggers backwards. He's like kind of like holding his arms out, uh, frightened at the moment. And that's my turn. All right. Uh, everybody roll perception checks for me real fast. I okay. had a feeling something was happening here. Perception is going to be, be a 21. Soft 20. Nice. <laughs> 10. Kel and Gibby, as you guys look over to the uh, the eastern wall, you notice one of the coffins uh, is kind of burning away. Um, oh, God, I already know what it is. Partially yep. smashed. Uh, you currently see a child inside of it uh, with Shit. long black hair and appears to be asleep or unconscious, you're not sure, as the fire is eating away at the wood around them. Is that is that Amelia? Shit. You've never, never met her, her, Steve, you don't know. But I mean, you see Kel a child. Yeah, Kel sees it, and so do you, Gibby. I'm not paying attention. I go last, so... Ba -ba 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 -da -ba. Alrighty. That brings us around to... Gibby, it is now your turn. Does it count? Uh, does it count anything if I shout down the hallway at them? That is a free uh, that, action. That is a free action. So yes, you may you may yell a sentence if you would like. I'm going to yell as loud as I can. There's a child in that coffin. All right, you guys all hear that. Okay. And next, um, so I can see him now. You can, yeah. You you see him past Kel. Currently, his face is towards uh, uh, Tannis, and he's kind of begging at the moment. Yeah, I'm not taking any chances here. I want Scorching Ray, level two, and may I use that with Quick Spell and cast it again? Oh. As long you as you cast a spell, you, 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 as long as I can only use a cantrip afterwards. Yeah, you can't cast two spells in a turn. You have to cast a spell in a cantrip. Um, so you could cast it and then cast a cantrip with Quick and Spell. Fine with me. Okay, wait a minute. Hang on. If you spend this, yeah, because I can't use twin spell with Scorching Ray. Yes, yeah. I will do that. Scorching okay. Ray level two, and then I will figure out a cantrip in a second. Okay. Well, that's the best only cantrip I can use is Firebolt. So, uh, what are you aiming for? Uh, him. Okay, all three. I'm not going to aim at the coffins. I know there's kids in there. <laughs> well, there's also the ghoul to the to the north as well. I can't but... see him from my position. Yeah, that's correct. Him. That's a good point. Sorry, I'm actually smooth brain. Go ahead. <laughs> smooth brain. Smooth Number brain. one. Oh, smooth bear. Uh, wait, no, there's no disadvantage. No, 18, you're fine. That hits. Roll. One, two d6. Two d6. You can just seven. The word yes. ray. Jesus. All right. She has another ray, doesn't she? Second she one. Level two, so a bunch more. She yeah. has three. At level Just two, because Scorching Ray, I believe, is a second level. Is it a second level spell or a first? Level I, uh, spell? It's a third level, but I'm casting it at second level. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I got Wait, to... if it's a Wait, third no, level. Wait, no, you can't do that. Yeah, if it's third level, you can't cast. No, it at no, second it level. says it says at higher levels. If you cast this spell at third level or yeah, higher, at higher levels above. At higher level than third, if it's a third level spell, you can't cast it at second level. You can't cast it at second level. Well, no. Why would it put that at all? Because it, it says is a you can second it... level spell. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, said, so, yeah, okay. yeah, so you're good. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Fine. Sorry, sorry, yeah. So so I, was saying, I think it was I third level, was... but if it was, you can't cast that. No, I we was don't have third level spells, yeah. No, no, wait, yeah, wait. No. I... 
Oh, then that last... Oh, I guess it doesn't matter, because I... No, you're good. Cause... If Scorching Ray is a second level spell, you're fine. But we have to retcon what I did with that other zombie. It's fine. I don't care. You're you fine. missed... I don't worry about it. Well, actually... missed anyway. Well, technically, that means that that uh, that last ray I hit on him shouldn't have lit the coffins on fire. Well, too bad. You got too your bad. Too late. In. It's that's fine. your first uh, shot, whatever. so that's your downfall. So there you go. What was I doing? It balances is out. Karma balances out. All right. So you have three shots. Second, Second shot. shot. 22. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Seven. How do you want to kill him? Woo! I mean, okay. how many ways can you kill him? He's on fire. Well, how do you want to kill him, though? How do you You're want to hit him? You're incinerate him? him? I'm just gonna... Do I have to kill him? I mean, I should. You can do non-lethal <laughs> No, do a non-lethal fucking firebolt. You can. That is an option if you want to oh, do non-lethal. It? it is, yes. It oh. subdues them and not something about them unconscious. Something about the way he's talking is concerning to me. Non-lethal. All right. Uh, you strike out and you watch as the firebolt uh, knocks above. There's a chandelier hanging above him. And you guys watch as the chandelier comes down on this guy, trapping him, uh, and he is considered restrained on the ground with his arms pinned at the moment. I mean, he's he out of the fight, the right? Ritual he's doing. He yeah. is, yes. So if you want to use that last, that third shot on the ghoul, you absolutely can. Sure, absolutely. Right. Can she see the ghoul? Uh, Ten. No, actually, that's true. You cannot see it. So disadvantage, I'll say. Well, 13, actually, wouldn't it be? No, not with disadvantage. No, disadvantage. No. Disadvantage, disadvantage is you take whatever the lower number is. Yeah, you miss. Oh, don't, okay. don't worry about it. You, you're like, you see like the arm, you're like, I'm going to hit that arm, but you completely whiff it and miss. So that third one doesn't do anything. Um, And, and he actually, I haven't used my movement. And if he's down, then I'm just going to scoot forward a tiny bit. All right. You can move a 30 feet. Bit. So I'll just go there just to be safe. All right. You kind of run forward. Durzab is just kind of like turning around the corner and notices that the darkness is gone. Uh, Bryant, it is now your turn. Immediately running to the coffin. All right, you run up to the coffin and you see uh, the eyes closed on. Um, it's a good thing you ran to her. You see her eyes closed, her head kind of lolling inside, uh, her arms drooped to her side. Is it Amelia? It is Amelia. You recognize the face. I'm grab. I'm using my action to grab her and pull her out of the coffin. All right, there's only a small hole, so go ahead and roll an athletics check to try and bust open this coffin because it was intended to be latched shut and trapped okay, someone 12. inside. 12, all right, you go and you <coughs> rip off pieces of the wood. And as you rip off pieces of the wood, you watch as the wood is growing back in places and you just keep pulling and ripping the wood off. Uh, that ends your turn. Uh huh. Good, that gets rid of the fire, which would have probably killed her instantly. So good job. Uh, that brings us to Durzib. Durzib is going to turn the corner. Notice that everything is pretty wacky hoo crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. and he can use his aggressive to run. You watch as he like runs past you, Gibby, and like as he gets to you, he just kind of gently squeezes past you. He's like, sorry, and he keeps running, <laughs> and he full on like jumps over the body, swings around, and goes for a full bare knuckle punch on this ghoul. I gotta grab his stats. Where's my work stats? That'll hit. That's really good. That's twenty-two. Nice. Nice. And that's going to be 11 points of damage to this creature. Uh, you watch as he swings around and just full on punches this thing. Its head like slaws off the body, but it is still alive. And you watch as Jersey kind of wipes his note and looks and sees you. Brian goes, Amelia! And kind of yells, noticing her in trouble. And that ends his turn. Kel, it is now your turn. Oh, Kidoki. Well, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is it this little old thing? General Divinity, preserve life. All right. I'm going to be targeting myself, Durzib, Tannis, five times your cleric level. Screw it, I'll hit Gibby and uh, Bryant as well. All right. Creature to no more than half its hit points. Uh,. Divide hit points between them. Five times your clerk level, find three. So 15 between all of us is one, two, three, four, five. So we each get uh, three hit points. Three hit points? All right. Everyone that is better three. than nothing. Hey, am I low level? That's nice. Your, your caster, any mm. healing is just like literally saving you. Squishy sorcerer. I've, pl I've played wizards and sorcerers, dude. Like you, 
If someone sneezes on you, you'll fall apart. It's rough. It really do be rough out there. All right. I do have a bonus action as well. You do have a bonus action, yes. And that was just an action. That wasn't an actual spell or anything. So... Ba -da -ba -ba -da -da. Ice cream! Okay. Uh, Ice cream cone! Yay! On the Spiritual ghoul. weapon. All right. Right here. 23 right. to hit. Go ahead. That, that hits. That is going to be seven force damage. Oof. That kills it. Yes! You bash it over the head and it staggers to the ground, flopping over dead. Hmm. All righty. That brings us around to... This is round two, correct? Yes. Combat's not over. Yes. This is round two. Okay, good. Uh, top of Were the turn Were we still order. doing initiative because of the fire? Uh, it's because of the fire and other factors you're not aware of. Okay. Um, it is now the enemy's turn. Uh, to which the only enemy is currently the Deathlock, who is subdued and unconscious on the ground. Uh, Tannis, it is now your turn. Uh, okay, so this this ritual circle in the middle of this room is, like, still glowing and active, and it's clearly doing something at the moment, correct? Yeah. Does Gibby still have her um, detect magic up? I can't remember. Uh, I mean, it you tell me. It has not been 10 minutes. Has it hasn't been 10 minutes yet. Detect evil and good. How, what's the range on detect magic, Gibby? Because you would see 30 this. feet. 30 feet. Uh, so you wouldn't notice anything. The circle is definitely magical, but you can't see any more than that. Damn it. I wish I'd moved up farther. You're fine. You're fine. Uh. Is, is this circle... Um, like engraved into the ground, or is it? Like, it seems to the... be a recess, and there seems to be something like pooling into it from a from an unknown source. You're not sure. It is glowing with a sort of supernatural light to it, like kind of a willow wispy kind of light. Something Wait. pouring into it from an unknown source. How many yeah. coffins did you say were in this room? Uh, probably about fifty or sixty. Jesus Christ. I mean, may as not, well get not, Amelia. Not from... Uh, so there are, there are, like, no physical channels. There is just something being poured you don't, into the circle. You don't see a physical channel, no. Is the stuff that's glowing in the ritual circle uh, necrotic or undead? Or desecrated? Uh, I would say for Gibby, it is definitely necrotic. 100% necrotic. What do you, I, mean for, you mean for Kel? Oh, for Tadek Good and Evil? Um, weirdly enough, this spell is somewhat evil. It's not completely evil. It's kind of weird. It's almost like, um... It's not like Doom Hollow Ground. It definitely is, like, the coffins definitely are. Uh, the circle itself is is definitely evil, but not as concentrated evil as what you've experienced going through this space as much. So with Detect Evil and Good, would I be able to trace some kind of source for what's filling it? Or is that just beyond it? No, that's beyond it. Got it. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify. Uh, so seeing seeing as how uh, Bryant has one of the coffins covered, I'm going to do the same with another coffin. I'm going to All try right. and uh, use my sword as sort of like a lever to pry open whatever lid is, is on this thing. Okay, go ahead and move your character to the edge of the map because that's basically where the coffins are. Pick the spot and we'll... Have you roll an athletics check to try and peel open a coffin. Athletics check, not great. Someone try to break this circle. Five. Five. You go to pull the coffin open, but it is sealed. Uh, as you as you call out that command, you watch as the as the death lock is kind of lulling side to side, like Ugh. he's definitely not in there in the fight anymore. I mean, is he? If he wakes up, will he be, be, be back in the fight? No, he's pinned down. He can't do anything. Because I will, I will not hesitate to kill him if I have to. I will do it. I will do it if he tries to get back in this fight. All right, he's, Tannis. That he's thoroughly out of the fight. He, yeah, he's he's thoroughly out of the fight. He's considered uh, he's considered dead but alive. If that makes sense. Uh that brings us to Gibby. It is now your turn. Um.
I will move up here so I can see the full of this room. Okay. So what do I detect to... now? Uh, now that I'm close are... enough to detect it. As you get closer, you detect strong necromancy energy. Interestingly enough, there is almost a dome of necromancy in, uh, energy that kind of like paints the walls of this room, almost like a protective sigil. Um, the inner workings of the circle are necromancy and transmutation and conjuration. Necromancy, trans... what? Transmutation? And do you remember Full Metal Alchemist? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, Methinks being in this room is a bad idea and we need to leave. As you enter inside, you notice that there are three strings um, that are tethering three things together. Uh, there's a string coming from where Bryant is, as he's currently ripping open that, that coffin to get at the, the child inside. There is a, and that string leads to both um, the Deathlock, who is on the ground, and the dead raccoon that is next to him. Wait, okay, say it again. Raccoon? So there's what a dead the raccoon two? next to him. Uh, the Deathlock and Amelia. They're, like, it's almost like a, a string that is connecting all three of them together. One string? Uh, multiple like, strings. Like, it basically, of... it, is it like three strings separate, or do those three strings come into one string? No, it's like three separate strings. So basically, it's like one to Amelia and the raccoon, one to the raccoon to the deathlock, one to the deathlock to Amelia. It's like a big, and it's like bouncing towards all of them. So each one it's has like an individual web. string. Yeah, it's like a spider web that's reaching out to each each individual. Does I, am I? Do I see this because of detect magic? You see this because of detect magic. Yes, no one else can see this. <sighs> Guys, there's some kind of weird magic string connecting. Mamiele raccoon in this guy. Um, can I hit that with something? The string you can attempt to. God, the only thing I have that I don't want to use my last scorching ray on that, but that's the only thing that has three three shots. I would say with the detect magic, this is a magical visualization. It is not physical. It's not something you can really hit. So I can't target it it's with a like, spell? It's like trying to punch the wind, yeah. Even if I use magic on it? Yeah. Think of the it's, stream more as spell components that you're seeing. It's, it's there, but it's not physical. Wait, it has three components. So that raccoon head. Where's that raccoon head? It's a body. It's like a dead raccoon on the ground. Uh, it is right, I will pin it out. It is right next to the death lock on an altar. <gasps> Oh, transmutation. Yep. Can I fi firebolt that raccoon head? Yes, thank you. Yes, Sarah. Oh, I Go love it so much. 16. Uh, I'm going to say... I'm going to say it's going to hit, yeah. Yes! Nine. Okay, you watch as the raccoon body engulfs into flames. You watch as the death log goes, no, and reaches out. Uh, that ends your turn. Can I, do I have time to yell something? Sure, absolutely. The raccoon, destroy it! No, don't! I get taken by him, please! You watch as the death block is now clawing towards the body of, of the raccoon. Uh, Bryant, it is now your turn. Getting her out of this fucking casket. I have my whole right, turn. Roll, roll another athletics check for me. All right. Seven. Seven. As you do kind of rip more of the wood off, you watch as almost in response to your aggression, it's like growing back faster. The wood is almost like like growing back, like uh, like aggressive fingernails, like growing out. And you, the hole becomes smaller than when you began and you're struggling. You, you're at the point where if you were to keep your hand in it, you might lose a finger, but you still pull at the wood. Uh, was that my, was that my full action? Uh, that would be yes to do that. Uh, it's a turn. All right, it is Durzib's turn. Durzib runs over to you, Bryant, and kind of shoves into your space and grabs as well to help you. Um, he is going to assist you on your turn. Okay. As he as he reaches over and rips and like rips off parts of the wood. Uh, actually, you know what? He's going to make a check on uh, a check on his own. Because he doesn't, he doesn't like you because you've been mean to him. So I was going to say he's helping me. 
Yeah, that's that's not a current character. Fuck you. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, that's a twenty-one. Uh, so yes, you watch as he reaches forward and he like grabs where like the the wood is growing back and just like rips a full section off. Um, and he turns to you and goes, "I rip you, pole. Got it." I'll respond on my turn. <laughs> Uh, you watch as he reaches inside and grabs Amelia and points towards you to rip the rest of the wood out. All right. All right. I will do so on my turn. That brings us to Kel. It is now your turn. You watch as the Deathlock is is pathetically reaching for this raccoon as it's kind of burning. as like this little ball of grossness. And he shouted that uh, he would be taken by him if we destroyed that. That's what I heard him shout on the last turn, yes. Yep, that sure is what you heard him shout. Then bonus action, I'm going to have my spiritual weapon strike at the raccoon. Okay. Which will be a soft 20 to Yes! Hit. Roll damage. That is going to be 11 force damage. Oh, fuck me. Like roadkill, the raccoon is splattered against the wall and you watch as the Deathlock shrieks out in agony, his body melting. Uh, Gibby, you watch as that one string is tethered and the rest of them just fall apart. The sigil, <laughs> yes. the sigil in the center vanishes, and you watch now as from the earth and ground, these long, crooked, almost painted, black inky hands reach out and grab this Deathlock and just twist pieces of his flesh off, like peel him like an orange and watch as they rip. And only Brian, as you turn back, you see as his soul is grabbed and eaten. As he's being ripped apart, Monty, can Kill say something? Uh, he won't hear you, but you can say whatever you want to your allies. Oh, Kill was going to talk down to him. You wanted the one liner and <laughs> I feel you, buddy. Well, you watch. Kill say it as he's smashing the raccoon. Sure, absolutely. You made your choices. You lived by them, you died by them, and now you will reap your just reward. The way the body smash. the way the body disappears is what I could only describe as watching a crab being sucked into a like a like the pipe. You ever seen that video? Yep. Yeah. yeah oh, no. He watches his body <laughs> just clenches into itself and becomes like a lump of flesh. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, effect, can I hit that lump of flesh with my mace? Kel, roll one more action. athletics check for me, buddy. Ooh, huh? me? Okay. Not Kel, sorry, Bryant, 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 roll an athletics an check. Athletic? Okay. Yeah, you're gonna take some fire damage too because the that's, fire's been that's going. Like 10. 10, all right. Yeah, you managed to rip off enough of a piece for Durzip to pull out Amelia. Uh, you are going to take three points of fire damage. Okay. Hey, I just healed you for that amount. Nice. As Durza holds Amelia. That's, he sure did. He did with his channel divinity. Preserve life. Preserve oh, life. Well, then I'm going to put that three back because I never took yeah, pay, it. Pay, pay attention. <laughs> um, you watch as Durza grabs and kind of cradles uh, Amelia. Um, you kind of just hear him like, hush talk. It's like, I got you, kid. I got you. As the fire begins to kind of spread throughout this bottom chamber. Guys, I think we got to go. We should probably fucking go. Are there other people in these coffins? Time to run. I don't think we have time to check. Go it's ahead not, and roll an athletics not... check for me, Tannis, if you want to try opening that one coffin. Uh, Monty, just to check also, we only saw threads to Amelia's coffin, right? Only threads to Amelia's coffin, yes. Yeah, we got to go. Time to go, 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 go. Tannis doesn't know that. Oh, can I, can I say something to Tannis? Besides, besides the fact we don't have time, this place is going to burn. He doesn't want to let people here die if he can prevent it. Go ahead and roll athletics check, Tannis, if you're going to be staying behind. At this point, could, when the party turns to leave. Could I, 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 could will I attack the in. coffin? Sure, yeah. I'll, you can roll to attack the coffin. Roll 20. Behave. Good. That, uh, that totally hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, ten nice. Slides. You bash into the coffin with your sword and you kind of crack inside and inside you see a withered husk of a once human being. I'm going to shout to him. I'm going to shout to him. Tannis, it was just hers. We got to go. 
you now begin to your your breath and your your voices begin to crackle as the smoke begins to spread in this chamber. So can we just go or do or can we like go go go? Yeah, we're going. I'm, I will we say out. for the sa- yeah. for the sake of this, you guys make your way out running as fast as you can. The child in tow, and you watch as the flames ignite. Uh, all the animals begin to panic as you guys make your way to that first opening chamber. The dogs are barking. The birds are screeching. Uh, the the parrot uh, is kind of sitting and waving, going, help, help, kind of waving around at all the different animal cages, like panicked. How much time do we have? You don't know, but they're all they're all trapped in there. There's no way out. Damn. I'm going to go. I'm going to run and start opening cages. All right. Are uh, there any uh, doors between... That hallway where the yes. fire is. In this yes, area. there are. There is the then fridge too. Could we too. close them as we go by? Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to stop and swing and close them. Yeah, I'm going yeah, to close them. That'll, that'll at least slow it down and give us more time. Yep. There right, was by the time... a tarp in there, right? There's a what? A tarp. Just it's like it was covering one of the cages. Uh there's like blankets, but that's it. Fuck. Nothing. Nothing really to help you stifle flames of that size. It's at that so point where we'll sh- it's engulfed we'll the-, the room. So we'll shut the doors, and if she's going to go free the animals, then Brian's just going to help so they can get the fuck out of there. Yeah, because right. that refrigerator door is definitely going to hold it back for a while. That's mad. I'm not what sure what to do about the basilisk and co- the cockatrice, though, but I'm going to at least start with the small sure. animal. <laughs> they've both been... They've both been de... Defanged, for lack of a better term. Well, the, yeah. the basilisk doesn't have eyes. The cockatrice has, like, a cover over its head, like a falconer's, like, cover on the eyes. How, how big is that cockatrice again? Oh, uh, how big is a cockatrice? Like, a like is it is its cage like the size of a parrot cage, and I could just carry it out? Let me look and see how big a cockatrice is, real fast, and I will tell you. Because that would be smart if we just leave it in the cage. It is a small monstrosity. So yeah, it is in a bird cage, so you can take it with you. And the basilisk is blinded, but how it's dangerous big. is it blinded? It's and a how big dangerous boy. Is it bla- I don't know if I should unleash a bas even a blinded basilisk outside. The cockatrice would be about the size of a large turkey. Well, nice. I'm gonna do what I can. I can grab the cage with the cockatrice and just take it with me, cover it up. All right. As you guys, uh, I'm assuming everybody's helping with this. Durzib leaves. Durzib like heads outside with the kid because he's like, we're, I'm getting her in the car and yeah. getting her water. That's fine with me. That's a good idea. Um, you guys specifically going to make certain the parrot is with him and safe. Yeah, yeah. The parrot's like the parrot is like bouncing between all four of you as you guys are like opening mm-hmm. up animal cages, like kind of like help, 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 like yelling, like an alarm going off. Um, as you, like, open up the dogs, the dogs just go running out immediately. Like, they just run past you. Um, you open up the rat box, and just, like, rats spill out, like, a horror film. It's, like, really, really horrid. You just keep opening each and every single cage, and eventually you manage to get every single creature out. The basilisk can't see, so it doesn't know where to go. Um, and it's definitely panicked. So, if two people want to make a handle animal check to help the basilisk out of the, out of the situation, they can. Brian will do do it. Then I who will has the best handle animal? To Bryant. Uh, who has best hand- animal handling? I, I think Bryant's just going to do it because that's what he would do. I don't give a yeah. shit about animal so, handling. So Tannis and Bryant, go ahead and handle animal for the basilisk. Guidance All right, here we go. Let's go! Oh. Let's go! Never mind. Doesn't even need Tannis. Ten. All right, Tannis, you go to like you go to like grab the tail. You're like, okay, you Brian, you grab the head. I grab the tail. You grab the tail, and before you know it, Tannis just like you ever see videos of people with like their dogs, and they just pick up their dog and like load their like or their giant pet lizard, and they just load the head and the arms over their shoulders and like carry them baby style with like the tail like dragging across the floor. You ever see <laughs> yeah. that? You watch as as Bryant literally just does that and runs out. And by the time you guys run out of that space. The stench of all the animal refuse kind of blocks the stench of, of smoke, as you notice now it crawling up the ceiling and out of the building as you guys run run your asses outside <laughs> into the rain. <sighs> and from there, we will take a break. We're going to take a break. Oh, God. Holy crap. We did oh. it. I can't believe. <laughs> I can't believe. There were so many outcomes to that fight, and you guys picked a very interesting one. We did it. We I saved like Amelia. That was probably the best outcome we could have got. We saved the animals. Fuck, man. You guys got his con. Like, when you guys got that, I rolled the five, and I'm like, I'm like, why am I looking at his constitution? He doesn't have a constitution modifier. He fucking nope. dropped his 
concentration. Fuck. Yeah. Yep. If he had not dropped concentration, Kel would have gone down. I was going to say that. Any amount of damage would have taken me down. Huh. Well, everybody grab a snack and some right. water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a good fight. Oh, I'm so glad I thought of that damn r raccoon. I was like, three things. I am so glad Guiding Bolt actually hit. That Guiding Bolt is so good when it hits. That's the problem with Guiding Bolt. Yeah, it didn't work against Ozumark, because Roll20 hated me that day. Sorry. Uh, yes, I'm going to get something. But there's like a way for a but I don't have time. Guiding Bolt. I'm so sad I don't have time to make some chocolate chip pancakes, because I could go for that. But I'm going to go down and find something to munch on. Ooh, wait, I have that butter cake uh, ice cream I just got. All right, I will be right back. I got chocolate for my friend's wedding. I got to we'll eat that. Be right back. Love you, I mean, I'm still here. Uh, I'm going to read out well. some. Well, I'm going to read out some bits because I didn't get to finish them last time. So hopefully there's stuff here. How about um, it? <laughs> let's see. So we've got Renfield with a tier one sub saying, let's go. Zako Duo giving a tier one sub to. He knows who he gifted it to. Dusty won with 200 bits. D&D session was unfortunately canceled, but at least I can catch my favorite cop show live. Put them in the ground, gang. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. We've got DZA 9000 with 5,000 bits. Hey, guys, finally catching you guys live. All my bits go to Gibby for best girl. And to all of you, thanks for the laugh. And Gibby, when in doubt, just remember, you're not Bosco. Jesus. People are giving you a lot of shit tonight. Right? And then, then I'm not allowed to fire back. All right. Monty's not here. You're about to catch these hands. That's for sure. DZ, shut your mouth. You're under 9,000. Fucking ass. <laughs> Let's zoom in with a tier one sub. Hello, everyone. We got Mr. Pockets. Not to be confused with Mr. Bucket. Uh, tier one. Love all you guys. Keep it up. Probate with 5,000 bits. Bosco, I'm usually around on Thursday, and I'm busy Friday. It's not my fault. You've let your success cloud your vision. Okay, probate. Monty's not here to hear me say this. You can shut your mouth. Okay. I don't need you to show up on Friday. I'll show up on Thursday just to bury you. Vapa with 245 bits. I love your show. I've been waiting all week. Can't wait to see what wacky hijinks are going to happen. Uh Hemihead with a tier one sub for five months in a row. Ah! Random with a tier one sub. Thank you so much. John with 200 bits. Why is everyone picking on you, Bosco? I don't understand. Anyway, good luck, everyone. And I hope everyone lived and get ice cream afterwards. Thank you. We appreciate that. I don't know. They, like I said, they want to swing at the champ. I get it. It's fine. It's kind of, I'm used to it. It's all good. I'm willing to fight. Uh, Destroyer with a tier one sub. Well, hello there, Shy Y. I think I said that right. Uh, we've got that morph guy with a tier one sub. We've got Mr. Nanny with a Twitch Prime sub. Nice one. Xandrus with a tier one sub. We've got BGBs with 560 bits. We've got Grocon with a tier one sub. Love you guys. And Bosco, you're cool, dude. Brian is like one of my friends in personality, so he cool with me, though sometimes I want to strangle him. Poor grandma ghost. Oh, oh, good. Also, sorry about your friend. Uh, Gamma Leo with a tier one sub. Ha, pickles required. Gamer Boy with 100 bits. This isn't your average everyday darkness. This is advanced darkness. Arch Requiem D with 100 bits. Arkov, sell your evil laugh somewhere. It is brilliant. Can't sell my voice. It's mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the Foxophonist with a tier one sub. We've got... Uh, Kinan Eldari with a tier one sub. Thanks for continuing to make this sub 100% worth it, everyone. We've got Hellborn with a tier one sub. We've got Rand Kosek with a tier one sub. Here's to 50 more months of nonsense. The Freeman with 100 bits. Sarah, way to go on that combat. Uh, Jade with 100 bits. Hey, Bosco, what is your favorite type of paladin? Mine is Paladin of Conquest. I don't know the 5e paladins enough to have a favorite. I'll be honest with you. So I can't really pick. Um, Ash Andari with 100 bits. Just trying to help you, Bosco. My name is Ash and Andare. Okay, cool. That's what I said. Awesome. Ash Andare. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, Connor. Even though you can hear us all the time. Yeah. Nice. 
You got a sandwich? I got a tuna sandwich. Nice. Uh, Dreadlord with a tier one sub. We've got Yo Haseo with two. No, that's 20 bits. Woo! Finally caught you guys during the break. Can't catch live often. We've got Burnout Vaughn with 100 bits. Bosco, you're a pretty okay dude from time to time. Irrelevant with 400 bits. Bits for Bosco. Last bits for a while, unfortunately. Take care of yourself. It's tough times out there. We got you. No worries. John with 100 bits. But I'm not giving you shit, Bosco, as I have no reason to hate Soundwave. You're right. Hey, probate. I'm still Soundwave, so fuck off. <laughs> uh, Avian fan with 100 bits. What was the Deathlock trying to do? Turn into a lick? Hmm. We got Jade with 40 bits. As long as Bosco is pulling his weight uh, at a team, there is no I in team. No, but there is a me, so you should learn to spell. Uh, Blackfoot Fair with the, with, the, with, the, with the 420 bits, Rip Rocket. And Dude the Man with 100 bits saying, bet Bosco's finishing move is the Falcon Arrow. Actually, no. It's the Boss KO. It's a cutter. And you don't kick out of it. Isn't oh, that right? Shit. Loses constantly. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you never got hit with the Boss KO. You're too busy tapping to the sharpshooter. It's also true. Yeah. Remember when we used to not film matches? <laughs> I remember, <laughs> remember that? Remember? You, you remember? I remember. Pepperidge Farm remembers. No, Citric, it's not a shoot cutter. Yes, he retired, burnout. And I blame all of you. So I have to take it out on you in this stream. Don't understand any of this, but okay. Cyberman, we all, there's a lot of us in here that also watch Kurt's wrestling show on Thursday. So it's a lot of inside jokes and references. Bosco is so abrasive. Yes, yes, I am. Indeed, I am. Storyteller's Apprentice with 100 bits. I just want you to know, Bosco, I'm completely indifferent about you. Fuck. After wow. all that time you spent making his entrance. I was going to say, remember how hard I worked on that entrance and just no appreciation. I wouldn't say your match is the sole reason why it's being recorded now, Probate, but it was certainly a big reason. The matches are mostly being recorded because when there's stories being told, yeah. outcomes need to be guaranteed because it's kind of hard to plan around RNG. I time. was telling Kurt to, ref to film matches long before you and Burnout traded the title back and forth like that. <laughs> Trust me. Thirty-five bits from Cody. Add bits for Bosco. Best halftime show heel. That's true. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good looking out. Also, thank you to all 616,000 of you. We really appreciate all the support. Sorry, 626,000. I miscalculated. So, what kind of ritual did you think that was? Uh, conjuration makes it sound like he was summoning something. But it was also transmutation. It was also trans, which made, I, honestly, I think he was trying to become a lich. Either become a lich or a soul exchange. Yeah, one to of get the two. Out of his he, current body. Yeah, he might have been trying to use the the thing as a conduit to get into Amelia's body. Yeah, because then he'd have the power of one of the fifteen and could go yep. from there. Yep, that's what I was thinking anyway. Also, I'm glad I got that one liner in. Oh, that yeah, <laughs> fucking Kel. It was great. It was great. Also, also uh, plot of the I guess again. I guess you have pets now. That or your department now has a sniffer dog that's a basilisk. Pupasa monkey with a tier one subscription saying, I was asleep. I've missed so much. All in all, I think that went pretty well. Hi, welcome back. Also, Knack with the 50 bits. Do you think Brian's divine health offsets stuff like heart disease and diabetes that can be the cause of a bad diet? I honestly have no idea. There are I, diseases. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe. 
If it's a, if if it's something that makes you immune to disease, then technically yes. A uh, hundred bits from Doctor Caliban. Shame Sean had to die for the greater good, but them's the breaks. Uh, burnout Vaughn with a hundred bits. So Bosco, why you so familiar with Hunger of Hadar? Are you playing a warlock we don't know about? Don't worry about it, Burnout. You forget oh, yeah. I've run games before, Burnout. I've had to look at spells. You're completely and I've had to help other people. Disease. And I've also had to help other people build characters. I have a general idea. Also, 5e spell. If you've ever played 3-5, if you've ever played 3-5, you know how many spells are in that damn game, especially um, when you have all the books. 5e thought, is not that hard to learn a lot of the spells. I played in an Adventure League one-off where we had a warlock, and we literally, like, we opened a door by accident, and it was filled with drow. So we, <laughs> the 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 warlock cast hungers of a dart turned to my character and went close the fucking door and so me and the paladin closed the door and like people were trying to get out while hunger of Hadar just killed everyone inside and we were like what the fuck yep that's messed up mm -hmm. the guy was great he like he was playing a black dragonborn uh warlock of the eldritch god which was which was badass um, but the dude, like, was total goth guy, and it was, like, the perfect comedy. I'm like, this is the best. This is Close the, best the door. <laughs> he was a cool dude. He was, like, super, like, goofy and chill, but he was, that was his thing. He was all about, like, Black Sabbath and, like, all, all that sort of stuff. He always had, like, band t-shirts with, like, death metal bands, and then, like, he had, like, a book that looked like a Necronomicon that he used for his character. I see him at, uh, he works at a store in the mall, and I see him on occasion, so he's pretty fucking great. I think we're all back, though. Yeah. I just you need to are finish. Completely immune to disease, as Brian. I just need to finish what I'm eating here, real quick. Am I? Do I have that yet? Ugh. Third level. Yeah, you have divine health at third level. You're immune to all disease. I have. That that's one's kind of early to get. There that. goes. There goes my plan to give you like a sickness from digging through dead bodies. But oh well. Is it? Is it diseases and curses, or just diseases? It says immune to disease specifically. Okay, disease. so then curses still count. So I could still become a warwolf. Ah, uh, hope I didn't take too long. I got a little bit of cereal, and then I no, had a I'm, no, you're gonna, I'm I'm still eating, so don't even worry about it. All right, I well, I'm gonna call out some more. of this gooey butter cake, but ice cream that I found. So, Dragon God, thank you for the tier one resub. We got Gilded Rider with 300 bits saying the Deathlock could have tried swapping souls to fake out the head lich. We got Jade with 100 bits. I wonder if a bard that is a college of swords is helpful. I want to run one one day. Uh, and then we've got Stellar Coyote with 100 bits saying the gang rescuing the animals from the burning building and the constant back and forth on whether to save the basilisk and cockatrice reminds me of that scene from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yes! <laughs> Solid <laughs> reference. Oh, I love that movie. Oh, I remember that now. That's a great movie. Oh, it's been ages. God, I used to watch Pee Wee's Playhouse so much growing up. Also, Sarah and I, thank you for the tier one sub. Thanks as always, guys. So good. Oh yeah, for that person who's like upset with me, it's like it's it, the brand is called Jenny's J E N I uh, apostrophe S. I randomly found it. I found it at Ralph's randomly. And keep in mind, this was like a smallish size cup thing for like ten bucks. So I was yeah, like, this better be this better be like the best ice cream I've ever had for ten dang bucks. Like I could get like. You know, like one of those big ones for like four. But it is really, really good. Are we good to keep going? That's up to yep. Sarah. Sarah, are you done? All right. Sarah, you all uh, good? Yeah, hang on. I'll put I'll put them I'll put it in the chat in case it's oh, okay. interesting. <laughs> oh, I can't because I'm not logged that's, into to Twitch. That's, that's the one the one thing that's sad for me is like I was buying Ben and Jerry's ice cream, but now I have to budget and I have to budget out my Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I, on the bus ice cream. Order, I've been baking a lot of failure cookies. Well, I can give it to you guys in the general chat, so if you want to look at it. <laughs> also, Jade, thank you for the 100 bits. Some more pocket bits until next week, unless I find more somewhere in my other pants. And Plata, thank you for the 50 bits. <laughs> Jenny's new official not sponsor. Son of a bitch. I mean, to be fair, if they want to give me ice cream, it's like, okay, the one I have is good, but you're kind of pricey, so if you want to give me free ice cream to shell for you guys, I'll do it. Also, to be fair, you do have an ice cream dragon in the party. Oh, sure, apparently we could absolutely actually... brand him. We do. Well, All right, apparently, guys, they done? actually have a... Uh... Yeah, I'm good. 
Oh, they have physical locations in LA. That's nice. You don't serve Jenny's. Sarah, you good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Connor? Let's do it. All right. So you guys, uh, you guys are sitting outside of the mausoleum. You're watching just like the entrance, just smoke just bellowing out of it. <coughs> you guys are covered in burns, giant scratch gash wounds. Like, you guys look awful, like terrible. And so does Durzum. Durzum's like outfit is ruined. Uh, as you guys. Press the digitation. <laughs> There's actually, I'm just gonna, I wanna go to Durzum and be like, you're good. Come on, wake up, kid. Come on. Hey, hey, she's not waking up. Uh, Brian, that's, I was gonna say, Walk Brian is checking her. on Amelia immediately. Hey, come on, kid. Come on. Come on, kid. Come on. You watch this. He's just kind of like, he's like, he obviously clearly doesn't know how to hold child. He's just kind of shaking her, like, not like, violently, but like trying to rouse her from whatever. Jersey, she said. put her on the ground. Okay, all right. You watch as he puts her on the ground. He takes off his jacket and kind of puts it like uh, underneath her and then puts her on the ground. Uh, ear to the chest to check for breathing in a heartbeat and then a, a fingers on the neck for a pulse. All right. Uh, there is a pulse. There is okay. a heartbeat. Uh, it is very, very slow. Uh, okay. So. Wait, do I still have Detect Magic up by chance? Uh, at this point, no. I've been saving all the animals now. I'm just going to say, like, where is our little friend who led us to her? The little the little parrot. light thingy. No, not the oh, parrot. Yeah. The oh, one in the, the jar. Wisp. The wisp. Where's the wisp? Do we see the wisp no, no. anywhere? We have no we idea. We that. didn't pay yeah. attention. Hey, Monty. Yep. Can I try something stupid? I'm uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Girl's going to look at Amelia. And he's going to say very authoritatively, wake up. What command? <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, uh, I've never seen it used that way before. That's a new one on me. Huh. The target must succeed a wisdom saving throw. Is she or conscious? Or command on its next turn. It, it is she no conscious, though? She well, is no, that's why we need her to wake up. She is unconscious, but this doesn't... Okay, this she is would be able to hear it, though, even unconscious. What, but, like, hear it in her head? or like Because if you're unconscious, you can't hear something. I'm going to check the unconscious state. Uh, okay, so an unconscious creature is, it can't move or speak and is unaware of its surroundings, so she cannot respond to it. Damn. So All you right. cast the spell and she does not move. So Monty, mm -hmm. as, uh, Brian is trying to check on her pulse, uh, he's, uh, where is it? Uh, this is gonna happen. Where's my dice? Uh, okay. So I need to know D8. Where did it? There it is. All right. Uh, I need a D8. Uh, so she's going to heal for seven plus not clicking on that. Thanks, game. Uh, okay. It is plus four. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total. Okay. As he's checking. Uh, as you cast it, nothing changes. <sighs> not good. All right. Um, do, can, can I, I do a medicine check her to know if she's under some kind of spell? Sure. Yeah. Because that should have helped. Um, 12. Uh, you don't have any experience with necromancy. So Could this is very, very foreign. Yeah, you may make a medicine Could check. Could I roll Arcana on that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Whoever wants to roll Arcana, you can. I roll Arcana. That's a soft 22. Never mind. Okay. It's some sort of subdual spell. Um, clearly necromancy in nature but you're not exactly sure how it works, how to lift it. It could be a curse, even. Um, it seems maybe it would be a curse. I'm what? going to I'm going to do my medicine check to see if her condition is deteriorating. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Roll a medicine check. 15? Nice. Uh, 15? Sorry. One second. I'm just running into some troubles here. Um, it doesn't look like she's deteriorating, but she doesn't look like she's doing well either. She looks very sickly, um, almost as if she has, like, mild, uh, pneumonia. I think that's the word, pneumonia, when you're out in the rain? Yeah, you can mm -hmm. get pneumonia in the rain. Yeah. Uh, hey, Monty, do, would, uh, we don't know this in game, it's only Gibby, but would a hospital be able to treat arcane things like they would medicine things? Uh, basic arcane things, not, necromancy have... is generally not common in districts. I have two thoughts. Okay. One, we try putting the symbol we use to unlock all the doors on her. 
two, we go to Lady Odelia. Oh, not again. There's a third option. She can really she can remove curses, but what what do you got, Tannis? We could take her back to the necromancy division. That's assuming they're even fucking there. Also, keep in mind the Baron really fucking hates them. Yeah, they really mm. fucking do. Bunch of hey, Monty. Yeah. Can Kel shoot a text to uh, Lucy real quick? Uh, sure. Yeah. Basically, just wants to ask if she knows any powerful clerics. Like, more powerful than he is. And As you send off that from. text, you get a message back going, you, with like three U's and a question mark? <laughs> Kel will reply, that is what I thought, but I'm too weak. We need stronger. Uh, she responds with a hospital question mark. Kel will respond, it is a curse. Oh. Let's get her to the fucking car. Yeah. Brian's gonna pick her up and put her in the car. As you go to reach for her, like, Durza puts his hand to your chest. To what? stop you. I'm carrying the bird. You go at that thing. And you watch as you look down, and you see that the basilisk is, like, nuzzling your leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's the parrot? Uh, the parrot is currently on Gibby's shoulder at the moment. Oh, hello. And I still have the covered cage with the cockatrice. I'm just like, um... Also, is there... Where can we drop this? We probably should find a place for this thing. I don't think a sheet is enough to keep it contained, mm. you know. We could we could probably find some animal control around here or something. But yeah, what are we so what are we doing? Are we going to we're going going to the necromancy? Now, yeah. Oh yeah, just we're just going to the car for now. Yeah. Uh, never, at the very least. I I never did get Avulaga's contact details or number, did I? No. But you do have, I think you do. No, you don't. Yeah, you wouldn't have that. Yeah. So, did she give, uh, I'm trying to remember if she did or not. I thought she, hmm. Hey, Monty. She gave you the safe house, though. She gave the safe house address. She did, yes. That so is maybe Mama Mama her. Regigi would know her, how to get in touch with her. Mm, no. Not necessarily. No. <sighs> you'd have, basically, you'd be did, shooting in the dark if they're at the safe house or not. Was there anything in the safe house? The division uh, looks like they eat there and sleep there when they're doing work in this in this area. But no, like supplies or anything like that, other than Not. food and drink. You guys didn't actively search for anything, so you don't know. Yeah, we left immediately. You yep. guys literally just slept there and you father. left. You didn't go poking through, so you don't. Monty, know. is this thing nuzzling my leg? It seems to be like using you just as a guidance system because it's scared and doesn't know what's happening and everything smells like smoke. Brian is going to lean down and he's going to pet it. All right, you pet and it. He's just going to uh, he's going to he's going to see if it's shaking because that's typically what dogs do when they're nervous. Um, roll an animal handling to to get a feel for. Oh, it. great! Uh, it's going to bite my hand. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, it definitely seems comfortable being outside. Um, you'd think a reptile like creature like this would be cold, but it's not. Um. Okay. It just seems very disorientated. It is also like half shedding too, um, like it's, it's shedding its skin, and the humidity seems to be helping it majorly. It seems to be quite content <laughs> with that. All right. It, well, do what? we want it to shed? Can yeah, it grow eyes like, back? It's like a lizard. That's not how eyes work. <laughs> I know. I just don't know. I don't know these things. I don't know. Uh, Brian's gonna fireman's carry it again. All right. Yeah, you pick it up and you carry it. And he's uh, gonna, it, it, is there is room heavy. in his truck, like in the back? Uh, yeah, you could probably put the back seat on the floor. Okay. It's it's going to be a big fit. Like, you're going to have to sit with it on your lap. Like I'm you okay know, with this. Like he's just trying to get it out of here. Golden retriever on your lap when you go on a car trip. Except twice the size. Yeah. Um, as you get into the car, uh, Durza hands Amelia onto your lap. Uh, Gibby, assuming you get in the shotgun side of things. Yeah, but where can I put this cage with this cockatrice covered? Just hand it to someone in the back seat or put it in the trunk, really. Tannis can take put it. Put it in the trunk. Don't, no, because that sheet might come off. Somebody put, better hold it. Saying, hand it to Tannis or Kel and you'll be fine. Yeah, we just hold gotta get that in the car sheet on it. It's like, a, it's like a falconer's cap. It's like attached to its body. It's not like a cheat over the cage itself. It's like yeah, actually it like on the creature. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, still, yeah. You, don't, you don't want to rattle this thing. So where the hell are we taking her? I don't know. You guys know this magic shit. Where do we go? Fucking damn it. 
I mean, again, you want to talk about... I just, I just want her out of the rain, all right? Let's go to just... a hospital first. Are there any hospitals in the Fiend Void? <laughs> no! I don't okay. think we should stay in the Fiend. Fiend. I don't think Listen, we this is... the Fiend Ward. <sighs> Listen, I tried to see if there was something wrong with her magically, but I couldn't figure anything out. But she's still breathing. She has a pulse, but it's very faint. Look, we could take her to the tower. We could take her to the stronghold. We do have a physician there. But if this is necromancy shit, then the boss is going to know about it. Then we need some place in this fucking district that we can take her to get fixed. Do you oh, know I'm... of any clerics here? I don't I mean, know. Not... I'm going to text Would... Lucy. Right, Would Mike know? Me. Would Mike know? He maybe... Mike, maybe I could call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah check, please. Check with Mike. Maybe he. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. You right. Any powerful clerics. What are you oh, texting dude. to Lucy, Tannis? I'm, I'm asking. Can you check to see if Avu Laga has checked in today? Uh, she texts you back and she says there's been no one at the necromancy office today. Uh, assume they're out on a job. That would suggest that if they're, if they probably haven't left the area. That suggests to you. Does she have contact details? For Avu Laga, question mark? Yes. I have her husband. Does this oh. start? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> okay, you want phone number or address? Yes. Phone number. <laughs> phone sure. Uh, she gives you a phone number. <clears throat> I forgot what this guy's name is. I have to find his name. All right. Hello? Hi. We're still here. Okay. What are you guys you doing? You're going to say something else. I'm waiting. Oh, I, 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 it, it, does Tannis want to call the number? Like, what's going on? Yeah. I'm, I'm calling the number. Okay. Uh, Durzib, like, you guys both have it, like, start having a phone conversation at the same time, so Durzib sets out of the car. Um, the phone rings for you, Tannis, and eventually you hear a very deep voice answer. Uh, hello, this is Dr. Laga, how may I help you? Dr. Laga, huh? Uh, okay, I'm writing that down. <laughs> hmm. Hi, um, my name is Vero Tannis, I'm with the Rampoon City Prince Division. What was that name again? Vero Tannis? Vero Tannis, yes. Okay, well, you work for the Prince Division. Yes. Um. As you are having this conversation, roll a perception check for me. Okay, here I go. Perception. Old man voice says soft 20. You hear barking and, like, the sound of animals in the background. <laughs> oh, oh is, <laughs> is it is it loud or is it... It's, is it it's it's kind of distracting. Um, oh, so we might be a vet. Isn't that coincidental, considering mm. we have like, some animals we need to unload? Uh, mm. I, am, I am not fucking joking. He's been a veterinarian since the start of the fucking campaign, and this oh is my like, God. actually hilarious coincidence. Because if you recall, the photo on her desk was of her and her husband, and yes. they had like, a giant snake. And that they was, did! Because, yeah. Uh, That's stupidly perfect, then. Yeah, I'm like sitting here just like, like, we her number. I have her husband's number. Sure, we'll call her husband. And I'm just like, fuck me. All right. So get the deep. Monty, we might not be good, but we're lucky. Yeah, no kidding. You say that. Uh, he seems to, like, kind of pause a little bit. And he goes, this wouldn't happen to concern my wife's work now, would it? Um, It might. I was just wondering if you had a way I could get in contact with her. She didn't leave her contact details with the division, at least none that I can access. What information are you asking for, if you don't mind me asking? I know it's none of my business, but I want my wife to be safe, you understand, right? I understand completely, sir. Um, I was just wondering if I could perhaps have a phone number, or personal phone number, something I could contact her easily with. Can I call you back uh, on this number? Uh, sure. Uh, I, so I, I apologize. I apologize for the noise in the background. We stuff. No, no, the noise. The noise, the noise is, is on, on her end. end. The noise is on his end. Oh, I thought yeah, you were the barking and stuff on his end. Yeah, the barking oh. and stuff on his end. Yeah, he's, clear. At a, he's at a vet place. Oh, yeah, he's like crazy. a vet or something. You watch as he I, hangs up. He hangs up on I, you. So I heard 
barking and, and stuff on his end. You're barking, yeah, meowing, various animal noises, yeah. Okay. Uh, he'll, he'll, just, he'll, he'll hold the phone over and go, huh, I think I might know what we could do with these guys. What? Wave the phone. Abulaga's husband. I, I don't... I don't follow. I think, I think he might be a veterinarian. So he Are you serious? That would be perfect. Oh, thank God. I got to get this big guy. Oh, ow, ow. Why would you step there? Oh. So you I should keep him. Oh, okay. Let's, you could use a pet. You are basilisks to... usually this friendly? No. Mm. Historically, no, but. Hey, what do you... hey, somebody has to like Brian. Fuck off. But like that, the I mean, same, that very kid, the same like, in the same state in modern day, people think tarantulas are soulless monsters, but they're actually big idiots. So you, you know, you say that, Ed, but keep in mind that little dragon kid liked you too. You know, until he so broke his heart. Yeah, I. But he doesn't um, like me anymore, so somebody else has to. All right, let me have this. <laughs> uh, eventually, meow, 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 oh, fuck, meow, like... meow, 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 meow. Uh, my wife told me to meet her at where the house is. The Great. safety house. Uh, her and her partner you. will be there. Thank you. Oh no! You've you've been oh, a, good. You've been a great help. Um, on are you a veterinarian? Off on the off chance, I hear some animals in the background. Oh, uh, yes, I am. Would you happen to know uh, the number or the location of animal control? We have had a incident that involved uh, numerous animals uh what district do you of. need fey heaven central fiend uh, there is no animal control in the fiend ward i'm i'm afraid uh, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna motion to them, tannis we'll take them to the what, what's clo what's the closest district to here would it be central uh probably central yeah uh give me the central then uh, i'm gonna motion to okay. tannis 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 we need some... I'll, I'll cover the receiver and go, what? You probably should specify it's a basilisk and a cockatrice. We can't just take those anywhere. Um, bit unusual. Um, we happen to have a basilisk and a cockatrice. Okay, so some exotic species then. Yeah. Uh, you would definitely want to specify that when you make the call, especially the cockatrice. That's uh, rather concerning. Uh, the... Out of curiosity, how many legs does the basilisk have? Oh, no. At least uh, one. The basilisk has is actually a three-legged, uh, so it has uh, three sets of legs on it. Three. Uh, oh, so it's six. Three, three sets of three six. Got it. It has six individual uh, legs, but but three sets. Six legs. Okay. Yeah, that would be a domesticated breed. Uh, you can keep them as pets. Oh. So. <laughs> he'll he'll mu he'll mumble. Domestic. Oh my god! Oh my god! Brian! <laughs> Brian! Domestic Brian! It. Brian! Keep it. Look, guys, can we worry about the kid first? And we gotta we gotta get him checked out at least, please. Ow! Why does he I'll, keep stepping? I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and and say we need to head to the safe house that the necromancy division is using. Yeah, let's and go. Cal is going to. Uh, Get Durzib's attention and start directing him that way. You see Durzib's like struggling to try and like call. He kind of pokes his head and he goes, I can't get a hold of Mike. I think he's at a meeting. That's okay. Let's we'll see. get him later. Okay. We Gotta know go somewhere we can house. go. If you he follow my directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You watch as he grabs the, the car to life. Immediately the basilisk is just kind of like, what's happening? And just kind of starts like moving around, like trying <laughs> to like get more comfortable. And so like, like kind of like it eventually is laying on both like uh Bryant's lap and yours Tannis and Kel you're holding the cockatrice kind of away from it. The cockatrice is like not a fan of the of the car ride. The African gray parrot um is cool as a cucumber. It's totally fine with the car. He's just still on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> he's like on the he's on the seat. Like he's 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 kind of like sitting on the headrest at the moment. I'll give him a pet or two. How you doing, buddy? The flesh you okay? is soft. Um, okay. Um. <laughs> you um. hear that voice of the Deathlock say that. Um, what flesh is soft? Yours. Mine? 
is you hear you hear your voice come back no and you hear the death locks voice with skin the rat each one of them can we please stop talking to the bird (laughs) actually i'm quite i'm curious now hey bird mr bird do you know what's wrong with amelia Mr. Bird. I don't know what to call him. You watch as it turns and back in your voice that you said so long ago in that cave. No. Hmm. Okay. Well, sit tight, buddy. We'll get there soon. We need to get them a dictionary. All right. So you're going to assist Jerzeb in a survival check? Yes, I'm going to assist Jerzeb and give him guidance oh, to lead shit. him to the safe house. He is proficient in survival. Woo! Ah! Hey, the driver. Give guidance. Yep. Sixteen plus whatever you give him for guidance. So go ahead and roll the di- guidance roll. Okie dokie. I'm gonna roll a one d four. No, you won't. 16. Oh, I think you're gonna. I'm gonna roll a one. You're gonna roll a four. I'm gonna roll a one. Thanks. Damn it. <laughs> uh, that's still enough to get you to where you need to go. You guys right, have cool. a vague memory of where the space is. You have the address too, and eventually you guys uh, drive, and you can actually see two individuals standing up front of the house. Uh, you see Abu Laga and a shorter gentleman currently standing in the rain. Mm. As you guys pull up in the car, Durza just glares out of the vehicle. Before I even be get out, help. before I even sure. get out of this car, I'm reapplying my werewolf repellent. Oh, okay, yeah, you go ahead and you spritz it on. Uh, I'm going to put the basculus as I get out on the car seat. Okay, yeah, Durza, oh. as you go to exit the car, Durza puts a hand and says, leave Amelia here. You thought I was going to take her out there? No, you stay with her and keep her safe. You make a, make sure they're f- not fucking around. Oh, if they are, they're going to have problems. I'm going to shut the door. Gil's going and to I'm gonna, the vehicle as well. And, assume, and assuming I see both of them, he's going to glare at the one standing next to the Goliath. All right. As you guys the look across, the necromancy division looks like this. <laughs> Woo! Our time! Oh. Oh, I got oh, words for that oh, son of a bitch. Oh, fucking Blondie over here. You oh, must is, get... he... Mm. is he an is he elf? missing an arm? He is an elf. You no, he's got tucked behind his back. Oh, okay. I couldn't see if it was tucked or not. I got words for that guy. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up first initially. Okay. You guys walk across the street. The two of them turn and look towards you. Officer Laga. Mr. Tannis. And I assume you are Ryer Fenton. That would be me, yes. Well, in, in Elvish, I'll say hello. Good to meet he, you. He responds back in Elvish. Hello, brother. <laughs> uh, just by a cursory glance, can I tell if he's a wood elf or a high elf or what? Uh, I'd say looking at him, he he looks like probably a high elf. Okay. Just like my wife. <laughs> yeah, your wife. <laughs> Ex-wife. <laughs> uh, we are in a bit of an interesting situation here. All right. While the rest of you guys approach, uh, Gibby, the moment you approach, you watch as the elf kind of like, as if someone has like, just like has the worst body odor. You watch as he just kind of like, like, like puts a hand like kind of his knuckle over his nose is like <laughs> oh yeah sorry about that how did that car fender taste by the way ha! <laughs> roll into Brian's gonna tag. laugh <laughs> <laughs> I have every right to be a little pissy right now I'm I'm in your camp Gibby fuck that guy six Aww. six he kind of turns to you and laughs and goes, You weren't the one to drive it, miss. But it fucking hurt. Broke two of my ribs. That makes you feel better about yourself. No, I will say that I don't feel good about that, but still Let's you can call understand. it even. Don't poke around our fucking division, all right? I touched a doorknob. You touched a doorknob of a place you weren't allowed inside of. If we could get down to business... Fair enough. You watch as the elf kind of says, what are you doing driving around in an orc mafia's car? Well, you ask a lot of questions. It's almost like I'm a police officer or something. There are a lot of variables 
in our situation at the moment. Right now, there is a little girl that needs your help. You watch as Abu Laga kind of leans down to whisper something into his ear. Perception. All right, go ahead. I was, yeah, listen. Thank you. Roll as well. My elf ears here to the tune. Of Fucking Brian is too pissed off to know. Yeah. Twenty three. Oh, we all you watch. I got fifteen. Uh, only ten is actually. I'm gonna roll. Yeah, check fuck I'll roll. Abu Laga. Nope. Never mind. Yeah, only Tannis. Tannis, you're the only one. Actually, she's got a negative modifier. That's that's still going to be just Tannis. What's your elf ears oh. here? You watch as she leans down and kind of like, hush, hush, kind of leans in. But you can just hear the, the tail end of uh, Hawthorne and the sight and kind of leans back. And you watch as Ryerfen kind of turns up and kind of nods to her and then turns back to you and goes, assuming what I hear is right, it's about the Hawthorne girl. Raises an eyebrow. You know about her. Of course I fucking know about her. We're the fucking necromancy division. We know all about the family of the 15. Do you want her to stay alive? If it's in her interest, yes. Then help us. We will help you on one condition. What is this condition? You watch as he leans and looks towards the car. We see to it that she's handed over to the police division, specifically the necromancy division. Why? Because a kid like that in the hands of orcs like them, they'll abuse her power. That's our job, is to prevent that. They hey. don't know about that power. I was gonna they say, genius, nothing. maybe you should investigate that before you rip her away from the only family she has left. They are interested they are in that kind of power. Ignorant. Jeez. In fact, the only orc that knows about it is sitting in that car because he's been working with us. And he has and he no interest of her father telling. Look, you can pretend to be all flowery and pretend that everything's going to end the best way possible, but that's not how it works. The orcs are going to find out. Baron Jermar's going to fucking find out. Well, he's going to find out regardless. What, is, what do you think is going to happen if you just rip this girl away from the Baron? You think he's not going to come looking and wonder why the necromancy division is trying to take her? You want her to stay incognito, then no, the best thing is to let her stay with him. Roll a persuasion because... check. Roll a persuasion check, Gibby. God, give me something good here. Ugh, eight. You watch as he turns up to Abu Laga. And she turns down to him. Let us talk for a second. We'll come out in a little bit, all right? Fine. You watch as the two of them go up the steps and enter the building and close the door behind them, leaving you guys behind in the rain. I mean, I Gibby. can't complain about the rolls, but Jesus. Sorry, go ahead. Gibby, Gibby, is she at least stable? Um, I'll go check. Can I tell by just, like, rolling You Arcana? guys did enough medicine checks to see that she's stable, but she's almost, like, unconscious or comatose. I checked her earlier. Her condition wasn't worsening, but she wasn't getting any better. Like, she was in but stasis or something. But we don't have a time limit. She's not just gonna leave us, right? I don't know. Oh, fucking I'm not a I'm not a magically inclined person, so I wouldn't be able to tell. Listen, I don't know what your thoughts are on, on these two assholes. I sure as hell don't like Fenton, but they are a valuable asset, and I don't get why our whole fucking division is afraid of them. We need to work with these guys. At the same time, if they try to take her, we are not in any condition to stop them. Keep in mind, also, we need the Baron's help to find this princess. And I'm not saying that we give the girl over. I'm just saying, going forward, if we're going to be dealing with all this necromancy bullshit, those two are some of the most intelligent on the matter that we have access to. And, I don't know if you know this, they kind of work with us. They don't work with us. They just work in the same building. We can't even get them to help us right now. Yeah, well, maybe we can be the exceptions to the rule. Because right now, everybody else in the fucking division seems to hate them. And I don't get it. We can give them a chance, is all I'm saying. Maybe they're so pissy because everybody hates them. Take it from me, someone who everybody hates. I get it. You eventually become a little callous. I don't hate you. That's one. So let's be their Kel. There is also a dragon lady in the dragon district who likes you. She gave me a plant, nothing for you. Wait, wait, what? Oh, right. By the way, 
Kel will do a very heavy wink at Bryant. That is for you from her. <laughs> we so... we all heard Lady Odelia say that Bryant had the sight, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, Bosco. Hey, hey, Kel. Why don't you add that wink to your inventory? Because yeah, you got that. fucking. Fucking yeah. hate you. <laughs> I'll do it, but I hate you. We don't have it any in your inventory it. anymore. Kel, it's gone. It's gone. It, we can... yep, I'm adding all, right all, the, all of the blown actually, kisses that you have in there as well. Actually, yeah. Right. If we if we heard about so wait, we all heard about um, Brian being one. Of oh the yeah, team, you are right? all very yes. aware. I want to. I want to. I want. Brian, keep something else in mind. If they know about the thirteen, they know about you. It's Good. 15, not thirteen. It is fifteen. 15. Or do they? I'd be surprised if they didn't. They know about Amelia. They did not seem to point them out when they mentioned the 15. I've How about we don't find people. out? That sounds like a good plan, right? <sighs> Either way, we're getting off topic. The best thing for this little girl is to go back with the orcs for now. They I would agree. Know. The so door let's... opens after a while. And you watch as Avu kind of steps out and goes, Bring her inside. Brian's going to walk back to the car and get her. Hey, hey, hey! Durza kind of stands up and exits the car. What are you doing? They're going to try to help her. You're welcome to come with. Uh, much as he kind of, like, stretches his neck and cracks the knuckle, like, the joints hey, of his neck. and just, just kinda... so you're aware, they already don't like you. Let's not get hostile unless we need to, okay? I know. He points, he points towards the house. The elf shot me once. Oh, great. This is going to be fucking beautiful. Oh, it's going to be shot. beautiful. Wait, shot you shot? Like, with a gun? Yeah, a pea shooter. Wait, wait, are we all here for this conversation? Yeah, you guys yep. are walking up and wait, wait, wait. carrying Amelia. Oh, I want to so lean. I mean, he gets a gun, but Tannis doesn't get his. I, I want to lean guys? up to. Wait, can I just? I want to lean up to Durzup and sort of whisper. Was this the one that shot you when you protected the Baron? No, 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 no. He's not. That wasn't a shot. That was a fucking killing blow. No, he shot me with a fucking gun once. Okay. <laughs> it's a long story. I can tell it another time, but Amelia was there, so fuck this guy. Uh. You guys step forward and enter the room. It's as dingy and as awful as you remember it. Wait, where are we right now? You're inside We're in of the safe house. house. Oh, okay. This so Brian hasn't time. been here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I want this one. So Brian has no idea where the fuck he is, but he is going to bring Amelia in. Yeah, Durzab's the carrying. She, he refuses to let anybody fucking touch her. He's That's being fair. very protective. You watch as uh, as uh, Abu Laga leads you guys inside and closes the door quietly behind you. Ryer Fenton is just like just shoving stuff off of the kitchen table. And you watch as he steps aside and goes, Abu, do we have any extra sheets upstairs? And she turns and goes, yes, I think we have two inside of the closet if they're not covered in your fucking blood. Blood? Our work gets messy. He would uh. know. And she jabs a, a chin towards Durza, who just kind of just looks at her. Mm. Thank you, by the way, for allowing us use of your safe house. It's not going to be our safe house for now that he knows where we are. Then I am also sorry for compromising your safe house. She looks unimpressed, um, generally. You watch as uh, Ryer Fenton runs down, and as he as he makes his way down the stairs, he sees Durzab, and he kind of stops, and Durzab kind of looks and goes, How's your aim? He watches, he kind of snorts and walks up and throws... Uh, like a really dusty sheet over top of the table. He kind of points and goes, put the girl here. Do we have the kit? He watches Abu Laga. It's just like, I think we have two left. We'll go grab it then. Kel is going to keep a very close eye on the proceedings, trying to right. learn what he can. If you need uh, any help, let me know. What are you going to do? Durisip kind of leans over and goes, a standard test to figure out the nature of her curse. Oh, um, do, I mean, do they know the basics, or can I tell them what I figured? What was it again? Didn't one of us figure something about it when I checked her? 
It was it was of necromantic nature, but it didn't necessarily seem evil, right? It was weird, yeah. It was kind of neutrally evil. And you would say it had kept her in a comatose-like state? Yep. Or at least um, subdued. I don't know. You maybe already know this, but I, I know it's necromantic in nature, but it's not exactly evil. It's kind of Explain. neutral. Explain this. Explain to us what happened where you were and who was involved. Long story short, she was being used in some kind of ritual with a death lock. That's about the extent of what I know. Death we lock. interrupted the ritual and uh, he got grabbed by a bunch of hands and twisted apart into a tiny little ball of flesh. A death lock of Chasmodius. You watch as she stiffens. Yes. You hear the we clinking of bottles as Ryerfenton re-enters and puts down. It almost looks like um like a you know when you get like like glass bottles and beer like the caddies kind of thing. Yep. Um, this is like a scientist kit. It's like it's got like probably forty different vials in it, um, all perfectly sealed, kind of white crystal bottles. And he kind of sets it down next to the kid. Durzib is Durzib is not happy right now. Like Durzib is so pissed right now. He was a deathlock of Casmodius, but he had fallen out of favor with his patron. At least that is what we gleaned from a willow wisp that was working for him. Well, then I have good news and bad news. You watch as uh, Ryer Fenton kind of like, kind of like, almost counting, goes through the bottles and stop and pulls one out, and bites off the cork and and gently pours a drop on. Uh, he lifts up Amelia's wrist and pours a drop on it, and looks, and he puts the cork back in. If the Deathlock cursed her, it's curable. If Casmodius cursed her, killing her right now would not be a mercy. I and think it's Thursa, safe to Thursa Thursa steps Deathlock forward at that and kind of goes, you ain't fucking killing, you ain't fucking touching her, and you watch. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to get in front of Durza to be like, just let them figure this much out at least, okay? Just, just, come on. The ritual involved a large circle, glowing, a raccoon, coffins that grew back in on themselves, her inside the coffin, and then the deathlock in the middle. When we destroyed the raccoon, those hands erupted from the ground and crushed him into a little flesh ball. They ate <laughs> his soul. Gasmodius took his soul for his conglomerate. There is a fate worse than death. You watch as, uh, at this point, like, before you even notice it, like, he's going, he's gone through, like, a few vials already. Uh, he kind of turns up and goes, you said you sensed the magic. What, um... What schools of magic did you sense? You mean in, in the room we were there? Um, yeah, where they were doing this ritual. Uh, what did you sense? Um, necromancy, uh, transmutation, and um, damn, what was the third one? Conjuration. conjuration. In, conjur in conjuration. He, he watches it like he kind of just thinks about it, like almost as, as if solving a math problem. That would have been probably soul transference. And you watch as Abu Laga turns back and goes, Yeah! That sounds shit. a bit of right. I was was right. there a was there a oh. vessel of some kind, a phylactery, perhaps a dead body? Uh, dead raccoon. Dead raccoon. Raccoon. Uh, dead dead raccoon. Yeah, dead raccoon. raccoon. Is not a human body. No, it was. There it was, was a very... coffin that had human bodies in them. We assume. You watch as she turns back, and Ryer Fenton now has gone through like probably another two more vials, and goes. I mean, she's a child. She probably has no idea what she's doing, if she knows at all. Oh, I wanna, um. I saw there were there were threads, um, like magic threads connecting the coffin she was in, the raccoon corpse, and the the death lock. And when we destroyed the raccoon head, they all like kind of fell apart. And that was you watch as they they both kind of think. Avu Laga kind of snaps her finger and goes, "That is probably meaning that it was a puppeteering spell blended in with the ritual spell." Yeah, we're gonna need uh, one second. I'm gonna go get the. Um... Death, holy water, or should, should we try life first? I'll just get both. You watch as he steps up the stairs and quickly returns with like these two almost like um, teapot, like tall teapot kettle sized glass containers, and he kind of sets them aside. The process that they go through is very meticulous, um, and it's very strange to see such grubby individuals doing it. Um, they pour out bowls. I would say anybody who is trained in religion, make a religion check. Well, I'm not trained. Yeah, I'm not either. Okay. Oh, I do actually have advan I do actually have advantage with that. You have proficiency? Proficiency. Uh, I have a check mark next to it. Yep. All right. You're good. You're proficient. You're the so only one. 
all the tools Fox that they 22. Have. Nice. All the tools that you just had to be trained, you didn't actually have to roll, but I'll I'll give you that roll and give you some bonuses. So all of the vials they have are holy water. Various different types of holy water. Um, and you get the sense they're trying to pinpoint exactly what the curse is before they remove it in case it kills her along with the curse. Um, notably, uh, in terms of the gods, there's a variety of gods. I, I should clarify this for the world building as well. I never did. Um, there is as many gods as there are concepts with certain gods ruling over larger things like, you know, the sun or the moon. Um, but there are smaller gods, too, that focus on specific things, like the god of puppets or the god of VCRs, things like that. <laughs> god um, of ice cream. There, yeah, there's the god of ice cream, too. Like, there's, there's like, the, like, there's are all there, demons and things like that. Are there, like, vastly differing power scaling between Oh, absolutely. The, the bigger the thing is and the more it influences the lives of, of people, the more powerful it is. The so less it does, the less powerful it is. Basically, so everything like, can have a god. It can, the god but, but, but the more important have... stuff get bigger gods. Yeah, but and people don't have to worship them unless they really, really want to. The god of walking must be of, huge. Thinks in terms of kami from Japan. There's a god for everything. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so they're using, it looks like they're using a lot of vials of very specific gods that kind of counteract each other to try and pinpoint exactly what the curse is. Um, you watch as he pours out the bigger, like the big... Uh, waters and you watch as he dips her hands in it and you watch as almost like this purple ink is kind of leaking out of her fingertips uh and you watch as he goes yeah we're gonna fuck me um shit and you watch as Avi turns out does this mean that she is tethered to Kesmodius? no it just means oh this is gonna be tricky shit um is there anything we can do to help I don't think I have it in me to cast any spells, but I'm still a cleric. So basically, uh, their deathlock ca uh, casted some sort of puppeteering enchantment spell on her. Um, but he did he did the magic in such a way when he started the ritual, it set in this, I guess, a stasis or this unconscious sort of state. Um, but when he died, the basically the source of that spell went with him. Hey, are you following what I'm putting down here? Yes, so we're going to break with Casmodius now. More or less, but I don't think Casmodius is aware because it's not necromancy, it's more enchantment. We need to sever it, but it's going to be tricky without either killing her or making it permanent. <sighs> what can we do to help? I'm just, I'm just trying to fucking think. I'm just trying to fucking think. Give me a second to think. Shit. I mean, we're not in a hurry. She's stable. She's not going to die. She's just in a coma. Uh, shit. It would be like we would need a soul to fish her out of the afterlife, which sounds really fucking messed up, but that is something we could do. What? How do you what fish a soul, soul out of the afterlife? You'd be fucking dead. You yeah. said what about that, how do you uh, how do you feel about Lady Odelia? Lady O. You see the show the exchange looks like we well, it could only be described as like uh, like being told to sit next to the smelly person on the train and they're like, nah, if we have to, but uh I mean she was pretty dead to me and we're low on options as your and expressions she's are telling us. Pretty good. I mean, you know that you know that curse from your division. She took that <laughs> off. Me. I sort of give her a look, like probably not. Don't probably don't say that one. <laughs> you watch as you watch as Ryer Fenton kind of caps one of the one of the um, jars and turns and goes. So that's why I can't smell you anymore. Mm. To be fair, things we went through is probably really good that she did that so you're telling me if we had somebody who was dead they could go in there and get her yeah if they knew her uh, brian's gonna pull out his sword <laughs> fucking jesus hold you watch his right hand let's just calm down there's ways to do this without stabbing yourself like an idiot like i said time is not a constraint here we have a lot of time there is something i noticed when we were in the girl's room there was consecrated ground the two of them lean forward and look. 
When we were in her actual bedroom, there was consecrated ground on the uh, upper banister of the bed on the window. So I assume she knows a good spirit, which I personally have experience with another good spirit. They both Under exchange looks connected. again. It seems clear to us that this girl practices necromancy, whether voluntary or involuntary. And they turn and look towards Durzib. Durzib looks back and goes, they ain't none of your business. Avu Laga turns and goes, that is exactly our business. There's a book. There was a book with a symbol in it, and she was reading it. We also have the Deathlocks book, if we want to give that over to them. It's an Elvish, so I'll, I'll hand it off to Ryer. Ryer takes it and kind of begins to flip through it. Oh, um, and wait, I'll get, I'll get that piece of paper out. And This was the symbol. Hmm. Interesting. From what we understand, this Deathlock had been trying to get to Amelia by having Willow Wisps convince her that they are friendly and to lead her to him. That it is why looks... she knows that symbol. He, Do you have the piece of paper that she drew as well? Did you get that to him? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, he takes it. He he spreads it out on the, on the kitchen counter and looks at them. <sighs> Necromancy has a way of creeping into you in ways in your mind and in your dreams as well. Powerful creatures will do that. I have a feeling that he was influencing her through her dreams or nightmares based off of this image. He kind of slaps the, the symbol that she drew down. Did she have anything hanging around her? Like specters, spirits, anything? You Two wisps. Notice? Will-o'-wisps? Yeah. City or forest? City. City will-o'-wisps. Okay. You see a sense she of relief could, to him. She could talk to them. Are they anywhere nearby? You know where they are? We killed one, the other one flew off. That could work if that will o wisp is around. We don't know what there, that one actually There is us. another there is another option, I think. We'll look over to Bryant. What about your ghost? <sighs> Tanis did hear about the ghost when Kel blurted it out in the hospital, but Yeah. <laughs> Sure fucking did. You would know, Bryant, that she is tethered to the material plane, though. Like, she can go into the ethereal plane, but she can't go directly to the afterlife. Like, she's stuck there. She's stuck here, and I told her to fuck off, so she's not going to help me. So I right. need to try to find that wisp thing. The wisp is our best thing. Last okay. we saw it, it was... Yeah. Well, about, I could... Um, sorry, go ahead. I could give you something that will attract ghosts. It would attract it would attract the wisp too. It could, yeah, but it'll attract everything else. It's the only shot we have. I'll take it. Okay, I don't want to do it here, though. No offense. We could go I think back we to should... that mausoleum if the fire is during downtime now. Oh, yeah, Alternatively, we, we could go to Lady Odelia. I don't mm. like her, no. but she does. Okay. I just, I really don't want her interacting with any of the children of the 15. It just, I don't know, something about her. Uh, she I seems just... very adamant about getting information about the children of the 15. If I never I know... to see her again, I'll be happy. The only reason I don't mind Odelia is because she shares in our distaste for Casmodius, but that's about where the friendship ends. If you want to even call it a friendship acquaintances. Listen, what do we have to do with this spirit attractor? Do we just have to go somewhere, open it up, and they come to us? Well, I would definitely take it to where you were, uh, and then I would use it, and then I would brace yourselves. So my recommendation is sleep, then go, and hope that you get not something aggressive. Fine. Oh, and here. You watch as he reaches and grabs like a canister from Avu Laga's belt. It almost looks like a, like, at first you think it's going to be like a, like a really big can of like, just a big canister, like a big grenade or something, and he pulls out one of those canisters, like one of those, like, jars, and he tosses it to you, Bryant. He'll catch it. To put the wisp in so we can talk to it. Got it. Hmm. And then I'll go get the attractor. You watch as he heads back up the stairs. So, where are we recuperating tonight? Babu Laga just looks down at the floor. 
This place is probably the best place. I did not want to impose by asking. <laughs> I'm gonna need to bring somebody else in here then. Somebody else? I have a basilisk. <clears throat> oh, your new pet. Yes. Cat Rex, please. I could. What? He is cute. I could Let's... probably take care of that in the meanwhile. You mean you're gonna go to that? Oh, right. Um. Yeah, we should. Do we have time to do that? I can get it taken care of while you guys rest. You watch mm -hmm. this Avalaga kindly circles. If you have animals, they can stay here if you'd like. Yeah, they. Yeah, we do. I'm gonna say. We... I'm gonna say Bryant rolling insight. <sighs> On okay. Abu Laga. <laughs> she seemed to really great. perk up about animals. Yeah, she Thirteen. Oh, fuck me. She rolled a four. The moment you said Basilisk, you could almost see the twinkle in her eye. Oh, she likes him. Brian's gonna go get him. Okay. That makes sense since her, what her husband does. Mm hmm. Uh, you load yeah, in the cockatrice. You put the cockatrice on like a shelf. Yep. Uh, the parrot flies in and kind of sits in the rafters of the building, uh, and you drag in the basilisk. <sighs> I'm gonna set him down and pat him on the head. You watch as Abu Laga kind of walks over, and it's just like, is he hand friendly? From uh, what your husband told us, he's uh, domesticated. So yeah. Oh, poor thing. He has no eyes. Yeah, don't remind me. That kind of sucks. Oh. Hello, hello, big baby. He watches, she just shakes its face and kind of rubs its face back and forth. I'll get a cloth and wet it so he can shed comfortably. Thank you, I appreciate it. We have some food probably, too. Are you one you of those people that prefers animal to actual people? She just looks at you and then turns and walks up the stairs. <laughs> I mean, honestly, me too. Work. I feel that. That's you a watches, mood. He watches, uh, she passes by Rarefenton, who walks down and is the pouch, and he kind of turns and goes, Why do you think she works with me? I mean, you seem okay. You're I not mean, I wasn't going to say. Me. <laughs> he hands Brian. you a pouch uh, to your the palm of your hand, Bryant. Okay. It's miasma powder. You spread it on the ground, it attracts ghosts. Don't use it or open it here or you'll attract every ghost within a hundred mile radius no i got you oh, hey so can i go use this we're going to have to be quick if we get that wisp yeah you want to get the fuck out of dodge ryer can i ask you a question i'm not sure if i like you net yet but sure i don't care if you like me that's kind of what this is all about mm. did you get any of the notes that i slid you guys under the door yeah, I did. I was ignoring them. We have a bit more preoccupying things going on with our division at the moment. Were you ever home when I knocked on the door? No. Great. So then let me just cut to the chase. I'm trying to work with you guys, because quite frankly, the guy I work for is a douchebag, and I don't even trust him. And he doesn't trust you. And I don't know why. But Michael honestly, Fitch. yeah. Why don't you like Roche? Because <laughs> honestly, he shouldn't be working right now. The guy's got a serious case of PTSD, and he's just waiting to break. I agree with that, but he's not on field anymore, not after what happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware, but the problem is, every time I asked him about you guys, he just blatantly said flat out that he didn't trust or like you guys, which to me sounds kind of stupid, because even if you don't like people, you're supposed to work with them. So this is me telling you that the Prince Division, regardless of what he wants to say, is willing to work with you guys if you'll let us. We can't accept that because of the curse our Division has. If anybody else works with us, you'll fucking die. I thought we couldn't be in your division. That too. You can't help us. We're on our own. You can help us? Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. You can't help us on our cases. We can help you on yours if we want to, if it doesn't get in the way of what we're doing. But Is that something no. you'd be willing to do? I hate to sound like an asshole, but only when it benefits us. Look, man, if you're going to shoot straight with me, that's fine. I'll take it. Hmm. I have a question, what? then, if you know it. Sure. Why were you guys cursed? You, you get the sense, and, like, both of them... Oh, well, actually, no, Abu's upstairs, but he, um... He looks kind of to the side. Casmodius doesn't appreciate us meddling in his affairs. 
so that thing I got when I touched your doorknob, what would that have done to me if I hadn't gotten it off? That was a ward. It was tethered to me. That's why I was hunting you down. I thought you were a spy. To be fair, you could have asked me that before you immediately came after me. <laughs> to be fair, Gibby, it sounds like they're not in the line of work where you get to ask a lot of questions. Asking yeah. gets me killed. Asking got us killed. Mm. I guess. Actually, as an afterthought, I'm going to turn and look at the parrot and just be like, you listen to all this? You got to get all your vocabulary up, up a bit, buddy. Yes. Good job. I just like... Oh, go ahead. No, I just like turn back and be like, hmm, apparently the parrot is undead too. Yeah, if there was soul transference magic, it's probably got a human soul in it. Is there anything to do for that poor thing? You could kill it. He watches the he watches the parrot goes, No! I think he's okay with being a parrot, as opposed to the alternative. Yeah. Is there a dictionary here? Because I would be more than happy to sit there and read various words to it. Uh, right I now. mean I could do it off my phone too. Hey buddy, come down here a second. He watches he kind of flies down and lands. Phone I'm just gonna... <laughs> Phone. I'm just gonna kind of go in a quiet corner. I mean, I'll, I'll pipe up when I need to, but I'm just gonna open my phone and find like an online dictionary and just quietly read words off to him. Avulaga comes down with like a full body towel that's like kind of warm but wet and kind of drapes it over the basilisk. Shot in the dark. Do either of you two know anything about trolls? You watch as they kind of exchange a look, and Ryer goes, Unfortunately, that's not an area of expertise. We know that they deal in the blood trade, though. Or at least they are recently. That you, watch his, you watch his Jersa perks up. What are you talking about? Yeah, they're trading blood. That. Blood with magical properties? Yeah. Prince, blood. I think we've, we've come across some, yeah. Do you know of any suppliers that could lead us back to them? That is actually our case. They've taken a prince and are using him as a blood bag. I can't say I know anyone, no. Then where did you come across the blood? Yeah, general dealers usually through the drow. You said recently. How, how do you know it's only recently? Because the troll sold it to us. Do you, you have blood from them? Yeah. Isn't that a bit unethical? Do you, do you have it on you right now? Uh, not on us right now, but I could get it for you if you want. I just simply wish to do a scan with a device we have. If we can sure. confirm it, it's Prince Blood. That confirms our suspicions. Your machine won't run that. You'll have to run that past the forensics team. That is fine. Yeah, I can get it to you. I'll get it to your desk when I can. Thank you very much. Speaking of desks, he turns back to you, Bryant. Yeah, I agree, Rose shouldn't be at the desk, but... Some men can't take it lying down, you know? Yeah, no, I get it. Trust me, I get it. And part of him probably blames himself for what happened. All of him probably blames himself. Because that's what the fuck I do, I've seen it before. It's a real mess. Do you know what happened? Yeah, of course I do. Can you tell us? Sure. All right. The previous Prince Division was killed by a tower. That's kind of what I figured. My head's just going to pop up like... I had my suspicions, but... So the tower is a thing, not a place. It's a living creature, yeah. What, we already what, knew that. What is it exactly? Apparently it came about when Princess came about. It's an aberration of unfathomable power. Almost invincible. Do 
It came about when Prince and Princess came about. They say they work in tandem. I wonder if the Princes and Princesses are... if that thing is the source of their power radiation. There's theories. But, to my knowledge, you watch as Ryer Fenton turns and looks towards you, Gibby. He is a werewolf. He can smell you. He turns to you and says, All I know is they live on an exclusive diet of princess and prince blood. And that is where we're going to end the session for tonight. Oh, God. Uh, 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 a shorter uh, session today. Bye, Austin. I was gonna say, I'm shocked we called it there. Bye-bye, Austin. Bye, Austin. Goodbye, Holy Austin. fuck. Oh, uh, but why? Uh, yep. Oh, shit. He said they. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's more than one. There's you also mentioned one tower. a tower. Cause we, a tower. You, cause we, yeah, because we only heard the tower so yep. far. Yeah, but the based on his verbiage, there's more than one. Also, I'm shit. very glad I asked about the trolls because we finally got information we can use. Yep, for our case that we should have been, been on the whole time. Look, Thanks, there's a lot Orc of Mafia. stuff going on, Tannis, okay? Thanks, Orc Mafia, for kidnapping my child and roping <laughs> us into this shit. Yep. God. Also, again, artwork artwork by that art jack who did a great job. He looks fucking, yeah, they look great. Yeah. This is episode 16. Yep. What do we want to call this episode? I have no idea. Whack a lich? Whack a lock. <laughs> that feels like a little bit spoilery. We have to avoid spoilery things. Broad names are generally uh, best. Death lock, death clock, death clock. <laughs> Death clock. Death lock, death clock. I can't say it. Uh, death lock, death clock. Ah, there we go. Whew. All right. Well, let's go around the horn real quick. Hey. Graveyard shift is pretty good. Graveyard shift is good. That is a good one. That one's not bad. I like it. I can't believe you hadn't heard of that. What? Grave graveyard shift. I, I have heard. My mother used to work the graveyard shift. It's You're the late shift. Just then. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, yeah, so let's go around the horn. Monty. Hi. Plug yourself. You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue on Twitch. Uh, tomorrow I might stream. I'm going to see how I feel. I feel like I'm pretty tired right now. I honestly have had kind of a rough rough day. If you're wondering why we're ending a little earlier, too, I'm pretty tired as well because I got woken up uh, for two days in a row. But um, tomorrow I might, might stream. I'm not sure. I definitely want to do art, though. Um, and yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Sarah. Uh Twitter uh at Sarah with an H and with an E Willia. Yeah. Uh check out Ride Your Wave. It's a lovely, lovely movie. Um uh, stuff I wish I I don't know if I could talk about. I mean I could talk I don't know. It's not a secret. I just it's just one. It's like it's all out. It's shit that's out. It's been out for like at least months, a month now. So what are you worried stuff. about? Because sometimes you just don't know if they don't want you talking about it. Is are there credits on these things? Uh, probably. I don't. You know. might have already I been announced know, that honestly. you're in these things. You should yeah, go play, look. Play it, play it safe, but yeah, just check and see next. Yeah, because if the credits are out, you're fine. I, I, I'll talk. There's a panda toy. Fuck it. Oh, panda toy. I did a toy. It's a panda. It's it's adorable. I sing. I get to sing and stuff. I already bought one for my niece and for my parents just because. Okay, it's, what is it called though? It's um, uh, I shouldn't say F it. <laughs> Talk about the panda toy. Uh, it's it's That's um, something I never even thought about. Yeah, you would you you need voices for stuff like that. You, you sure do. Uh, it's this series of toys called Linkamoles. Linkamoles. Okay. It's, it's, it's like this new little panda. He's adorable. I bought it from. All right, guys, go get yourself a Sarah Panda. It's 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 funny as heck to hear my voice. She's like she's like, oh, Zoe carries it around with her all the time. I'm just like, this is so weird. <laughs> You're in all these children's bedrooms, Sarah. I don't know. I think I'll finally make a Twitter announcement about it. It's just a little hard. Do it. Stuff. That's it cool. It amuses me though to no end. God, that's something I never think. Of. That's like I had an artist, like a artist who I I was a classmate with, and they wanted to make like the diagrams for medical textbooks. There's like these things you don't think about that certain professions do need to cover, and it's neat. Mm -hmm. 
No, I mean it comes. Uh, those, it comes through the agencies like everything. Other all the other auditions. So you know. Hey, Arkov. Mm. Do the thing. Suffer. Suffer. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Arkov. Tomorrow night is going to be murder cave shenanigans as per the usual. Monday will be an extra long Mass Effect stream since mm. I couldn't do it last week. And then Tuesday, Final Fantasy all day. I will not be stopped. That's Damn. it. Hey, Connor. Yeah, it's me. What, what are you up to? I'm about to sneeze. All right. <laughs> uh oh. Preemptive Gazuntite. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. Help you! <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Distortion Double, where I'm streaming Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Tuesday, uh, probably just variety streams for now. RW is sort of, uh, put on the shelf at the moment until I figure out what I want to do with it. Uh, Friday is Friday Funhouse, where I play a lot of fun, random games with my friends. We played Fall Guys, and it was a blast. Saturday, we're playing Yakuza, the entire series, Yakuza Zero. And, uh, funnily enough, Sega showed up to the stream yeah that's today. fucking awesome it's crazy <laughs> they're just like they're like hey how's it going and i look at the twitter i see it's or i look at the twitch i see it's verified i'm like oh that's sega <laughs> uh but they can uh also find me streaming on sunday with the people behind dead house sonata uh playing a bunch of random games we played epic spell wars battle for mount skell's fire and speaking of which uh, if you are at all interested in Dead House Sonata, a spiritual successor to the Legacy of Kane series being developed by Dennis Dyack, the man behind the Legacy of Kane series, and also uh, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, then definitely check out Dead House Sonata. Uh, it's a six-player action RPG where you play as the dead to fight the living. It is narratively driven, and it is awesome. I'm going to be voice acting in it. And you should definitely go ahead and check it out. Join the forums, join the Discord. Sweet. And I actually knocked out all the bits and the subs during the break. So, Ooh. yeah, we're good. We just got to we got to raid somebody. All right. Who do we want to? Oh raid? yeah, go check out Pokemon, guys. It's the last episode. Yeah. Go check it out. Pokemon uh, Twilight Wings. It Twilight was Wings. Well, the, yeah. It's very well animated. I really need to watch I, it. I working on that was a fucking blast. Hey. Can we can we raid Draco? She got married this week. I was gonna say I was Draco doesn't have a lot of people and she's streaming, so let's do it. She is. Look she's at, streaming Fall look Guys. at that married motherfucker. Okay, yeah. I you know what? Can I just tell a quick story before we raid? Yeah. Because when I was we were hanging out uh on their wedding night and it was like the most chill. Like they they didn't even have a ceremony. They just wanted to fucking get married. Um and like we went to their uh, they went to we they had a hotel room and it was My Little Pony pokemon and how to train your dragon and i was so jealous i was like this is the fucking Holy best shit. and like there were snacks everywhere it was amazing uh and like we were all like ho humming or like because they were really tired and they're just like i'm like i, I like to stay later and they're like oh do you want to stay overnight i'm like that would be the ultimate third wheel achievement if i if i stayed in your hotel on your wedding night the same night <laughs> like just sleeping over <laughs> But I politely declined because I'm like, no, you guys want to like hang out and play video games and shit. So don't worry about us. But yeah, let's raid them. Uh, our raid message will be happy marriage. Happy marriage. Oh, happy marriage. Happy wedding. Oh, she's playing Fall Guys. She is, yeah. yeah. Dude, weren't you playing that last night, Connor? I want to yeah, play that too. Dude, that fucking it's match fucking with funny. Probate and Malavik was disgusting. Wait, I was she watching it. disappeared off my Twitch. What happened? Wait, is she gone? Oh no, it's just my Twitch being weird. Okay, well. Okay. Yeah, she still she streams till like two in the morning. Dark. I can't spell dark go. You're also, you're gonna go. destroy her computer again. Maybe. She did get uh -oh. an upgraded PC. But yeah, but you crashed you did that last time and it crashed it. Killer internet. Happy Do it. Uh wait, happy mowage. Happy mowage. Mowage. Ah woo woo. Wait, what do you mean? Oh god damn it, I typed her name wrong. Hold on, I fucked it up. When you try we'll get there soon. Breath, but you don't succeed. There. That, it worked. I did it this time. Mowage. Mowage. Mowage.
I'm lonely. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs>